Hello. Hey. Um, hello. How's it going? Good. So you know what I was saying about doing a bake for you. I was just wondering, is there anything particularly that you're feeling at the moment that you want to go in? Hmm. Okay. Let me think. Um. Well, I think I need a bit of brightening up. I would love something colourful and tangy. I love a good sour fruit. So yeah, I don't know something tropically. Maybe like pineapple, banana. How's that sound? All good. And any particular biscuit? Any favourite biscuit you're feeling right now? Um, I love an Oreo. I don't know if those things will mix well together, but I know that you'll make it work. No, leave that with me. Um, I'll bring all that round, and we will have a bake that we can create together. Okay, delicious. Sounds good. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I wanna pick you up and scoop you out. Do you want to come in? I will do indeed. Oh, you guys come in as well. <laughs> okay. Come on in. All your favourites. Pineapple. Pesto. This is oh, probably wow. not, not going to be going in I don't know. the I bake. Not be but now ignore the state of these, but bananas that look as rank as this <laughs> make the best bake. What's your saying? You have a saying, don't you? <laughs> oh, come on. Weeping bananas make happy banana bakes. <laughs> Just rolls off the top. Yeah, it's a bit, big one. Um, and then Oreos, but I did have a few on the way. Great. So, um, oh, and just some good old vanilla extract. Oh, wow. Going in Very fancy the bake. Bottle. It is a bit fancy, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Vanilla bean paste. Right, what's this? <laughs> my sketchbook. Ooh. Yeah, so I did like a bit of a this mood is board. so cute. Inspiration it's so board. cute. Using wow. these, are, these are what we're going to bake the cakes in. So they're sort of like the colour palette of the sunflower. So I know you love pineapples, mm -hmm. and I was inspired by the artwork on Human, mm -hmm. where you're holding sunflowers. Mm -hmm. So have you ever made dried pineapple sunflowers? No, I have not. We're going to be doing those. Okay. So we're going to be putting bananas in the bake, pineapple in the bake, some coconut, so it's like a tropical theme, mm. and then I know you love an Oreo. I do. So we're going to be hiding the base of an Oreo in oh. the cupcake. So smart! And then we're going to use the crushed up Oreo crumb to make like the sunflower centre. Mm. Yeah. Get the oven on. All right. Get the <laughs> okay. oven on in your Sorry. fancy kitchen. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Careful, it's a weapon. <laughs> And blind you at the same time. <laughs> We're going to be using this to make the pineapple flowers. Okay. So all we do is just wow. Cut the base Have you ever off. done that hack where you've tried to pull out each little, little nub eye. of the chunk? Yeah. And then hey. you're supposed to be able to like, eat, eat them like little snacks. I've like, never ever done that. So for this bit, I am going to remove the eyes. Not a See, one of your five a day. We're then going to dry these off in the oven, but obviously they are still quite moist. <laughs> so, Say it into the camera. Yeah. Moist. Moist. Hence why we've got a whole load of kitchen roll. So we dry them out in the oven, and then to create the pineapple shaped flour, <gasps> you put them in the cupcake tin, wow. and then they get that sort of like sunflower shape rather than wow. lying flat. We want 50 grams of the pineapple. Mm -hmm. Oh, 49. Do you want to do that? Oh, yeah, all right. Go then. Go in and have a go. Okay, at that. you ready? <laughs> there we go. Look at that nice scale. There we go. Yeah? There yeah. we go. Perfect. Okay. So now that's all good, so we can go ahead and start making the cake itself. This is how we start baking. Okay. With the cupcake cases. Do you want the honour of lining the tin? Yes. I've yeah. done like a mix of yellow and brown cases. Okay, what's, what's the plan here? Should I just do it however you want? Okay. So. We'd line that, and then, like I was saying, we're going to be putting one of your favourite <laughs> biscuits in the base. Delicious. It's a little hidden thing. So, I'm just getting a knife, wow. sliding down, and then the one with the cream. You lick base. it off. <laughs> and then put it you in can, the <laughs> but that one goes in the base. Oh my god. So then you'll have the Oreo surface. So it's almost a bit, when it's in here, it's a bit sunflowery. Oh, oh nice. look at that. Little colour. And then we're going to it's save fun. the bits that haven't got the cream on, and we're going to break them up the to make the, the centre of the crumb. Wow. So I'm going to mix all the wet ingredients together, okay. and you're going to sort out the dry ingredients. Okay. Don't worry. Oh, so okay. I'm just so, so really we've got bad at one bowl, 50 grams of pineapple going in. We 
we're going to be putting in the dry. So do you want to yes. look after the dry? Okay. Although it's self-raising flour, we're going to just add an extra raising ingredient. So we've got some bicarbonate soda. Okay. It's about a pinch. You really do decide, Bolo. Do you want to wow. sift that over the mixture? Now, I have a question. Yeah. Is it sieving or sifting? Fold. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very good at fold. You can, you can Are you good at folding? Technique. There you go. And then we're just going to now transfer it between the cupcake cases. Wow. Do you know what the UK number one was when you were born? No. I looked it up. Is it Spice Girls, sir? No. I can't Take that. Okay. It begins with a B. Back. Bring him back. Bang, bang, bang. Back, 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 back for good. Oh. <laughs> Back. Anyway, moving on. Okay. <laughs> what was the first single that you bought? Do you remember? That I bought? Uh, the Ting Tings. We started Say nothing my name. as an album. Yeah. Oh, the first yeah. single. I don't think I ever really bought a first single. Is there anyone you would love to do a duet with? Oh. So many. Yeah, I know. That's so a many. I'd love to just be in a room with Mozart. You know? There you go. Perfect. Look at them. Don't look at this. Beautifully done. Are you eating this? Oh, the egg? Mmm! Mm. <laughs> so good. <laughs> now we're going to bake these and they should take about 15 to 20 minutes and you can look the same. <laughs> is there anything that rhymes with pineapple? No, there is literally nothing that rhymes with pineapple. Why don't you shake it out? Okay. Like, duh, 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 duh. Uh, I like that key change. Okay. A cake. A cake. a cake. It's not fake. Just a cake. That's what we make. <laughs> a cake. A cake. Everybody! A cake! A cake! <laughs> <laughs> good. Why did I rhyme every word with every word? That's not how writing works. These came out of the oven while we were churning they away. amazing. So wow. we're just going to cool them on said cooling rack. Okay. So you can just pop them on. And you can see it's more on the yellow ones. Can you see they've got a little Oreo on their base? There it is. Very cute. A little hidden Oreo. Wow, these feel really good. They're good. Quite moist. 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 I'm just melting some chocolate that we're then going to mix the bit of coconut that we didn't put in the bake and mix it together and that's what we're going to put in the middle of the dried sunflowers. Mm. And just one way of making it melt a little bit quicker. Oh, wow! Just like that. While the chocolate is melting, I'm going to move that to the side. Mm -hmm. Do you want to break up the Oreo crumbs to be in the centre of the sunflower? So, classic approach of just breaking them up yeah. in a sandwich bag. It's very primary school to me. It is, I isn't it? Why. I mean, you could, but we're just going to protect your table a little bit. And a little... Rolling pin. Do I just whack it? Just whack it. This feels amazing. Ah! Therapeutic. Look at that! Oh and then if you want, this can be quite satisfying. Oh yeah, go on. Get that. Get it's that in. Come on now. You have a roll. Do it again, do it again. Oh wait. <laughs> Wow. I mean, if nothing else. I'd sleep to that. Just crush up Oreos. That's going to be the centre of our sunflower. Mm -hmm. And then once the chocolate's melted, we'll mix the coconut in, and then we'll be ready to decorate the actual sunflowers. Mm. So, beautifully crushed. Do you want to transfer them into this little dish? Sure. You could Don't do it straight it. from there. <laughs> I mean, you can do that with the leftovers, if there oh, are any yeah. leftovers. Look at that. There you go. So that was literally just two Oreo size, but an Oreo. Perfect. So you don't need that much. I that getting on. That's pretty gooey. Pretty good, a little bit longer. So while that's doing that, we're just going to whip up the mascarpone to go on top. Oh, yeah. So we just want to sweeten it slightly. So I've just got some icing sugar in here. I tend to do about 50 grams of icing sugar to, they normally come in 250 gram tubs. Cool. Let's see if our, I think has our chocolate melted. You know, I, whenever I watch baking videos and I watch the chocolate that is the being most melted, satisfying it's the bit. most satisfying. And I always wish that I was in the video, and now I am. You're in, the in video. it. Should I? Yeah, do it from a height. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Here we go. So this is just obviously we're going to be putting this into the middle of the. 
pineapple flowers, but the middle of a sunflower, it isn't completely smooth. It has got those like little bits of texture, so that's mm. what we're adding in here. She just wants to join in. Oh, oh hello, go with the magical pony. So we've got the pineapple flowers ready to decorate. So we just dried them out in the oven earlier with the slices that you cut off and drained. Mm -hmm. and How then long do they go in for? They sort of go in for, so once the cakes are baked, turn the temperature down to about 80, 100 to quite a low heat and just put them straight on a rack and leave them in there to dry out for about, they take about an hour and a half to two hours. Mm -hmm. But you're just looking at taking all the moisture out. And then once they come out and they're pretty much dried, if you then just put them in the empty cupcake tin and then you just get a little bit more of a, a finish. And then all you do is take, so we've got paintbrushes here as well. Wow. So just take a bit of your chocolate that's got the coconut and just sort of. That looks beautiful. Splodge it in the middle. Wow. And then. I love that you use paintbrushes in your know, baking. My, my kitchen's a bit like a little artist studio. <laughs> and then these are the Oreo crumbs that you perfectly just sprinkle. ground down. So just sort of try and get them in the middle, but the chocolate's almost acting as glue. Mm -hmm. So then once they have like set, you can then just sort of like shake away I see. the excess. But there you go. Wow. And to be honest, even when you get a few little crumbs, it just looks like little You're sunflower right. seeds. Yeah, you only could join in. Do you want to have a go? How do you feel about sunflowers? Do you like Oreo crumbs? No, no, no. There we go. No, no. Do you remember the first gig you went to? Yes, I went to see Rihanna <laughs> with my friends from school. And yeah. Pixie Lot opened for her. And um, yeah, I was with all my friends and we had uh, glow stick wristbands on. And so we were like waving them like crazy and Pixie Lot waved at us. Did she wave? Yeah. What about Rihanna? Did Rihanna wave? No, <laughs> she did not. Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we, like to, we like to imagine. So like she thinks she did. Yeah, so now every time I play a gig, I make sure to make eye contact because it's with just them. like Yeah, you're element. making up someone's memories. Yeah, it's so fun. What next? <laughs> Decorating the cupcakes. All we need to do is just put the mascarpone on top of the cake and then decorate them with one of Dodie's pineapple sunflowers. <laughs> you want to teach me how to Shall I show you the first one? It is, though, quite rustic, because really the pineapple flower is going to be covering the top. So wow. it's like embracing your inner plasterer. <laughs> so this is just like a little palette knife, but you mm -hmm. could use like a rounded just knife at home in the kitchen. Oh, wow. And just... Oh, that's beautiful. Plaster around. Another like little top tip you can do is that if you've just got a glass of water, you can like dip the palette knife in slightly warm water and then dry it off so you get a more smooth finish. Mm. But you're just really wanting to add a creamy bite to the cake and have something that the sunflower can sit, can sit on. That looks so beautiful. So just do that and then take one of your pineapple flowers and just pop it <gasps> on the top. Look at that! There you go. That is so cute. Should we have you holding a whole load of them like the album? <laughs> yeah. But, but I head. can eat them. I can eat them. Do you have a guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. I don't think anything should be guilty. No, you know? exactly. No, but that's wrong. I, I would probably like answer this like a decade ago and say like Mika is my guilty pleasure because it wasn't very cool to like Mika. But Mika is so cool now. I it think is. Like, yeah. I remember listening to that album over in Vancouver. Oh my gosh. With Grace Kelly. Oh my gosh. Any piece of music that you love to dance to? I have like a few favorite jamming songs at the moment. There's a song called Ferris Wheel by Sylvanesso. I've not heard of that. It's just such a good dancing song. Yeah. Or a song called Pretty Great by Fickle Friends. Um, so we could add them to the baking playlist. Yes, but also a song that we listen to um, on tour. Actually, this could be kind of like a hidden song. Um, we've discovered that um, gospel music is Banging, like so good. There are some like really niche hidden gospel songs um, that like they play with like the whole band and everything. They have like these crazy key changes in. I will play you one. Yeah. It's like unbelievably good. Which one is it? Which okay. one would you go to? There's one called Reason to Fear. That one is just like <laughs> jamming. And then there's our special one, which is Desire. Which one do you want to pick? I don't know. Choose which other um, one. I quite like. We this need to leave one. some for your flatmates as well, don't oh, we? Oh, yes, they would love it. There we go. Okay. I'm going to choose this little one here. Oh, so they should exciting. all have an Oreo. Yeah, your one has. Wow. Peel it back. Okay. 
All of your flavours come back. Look at that, such oh. a good base. Good yeah, you see, then you get a bit of a, a biscuit bite. There's mine as well. She's going for I'll it. I'll have it. Yeah. Oh, you're going to have to eat the whole thing in one. You're going to have a pineapple moustache. Mm. Mm. A bit crunchy. Oh, it is good. Oh, my God. See, I mean, I know you've already enjoyed the mascarpone, but it, it's, it's less sickly mm. sweet. Mm. So, for everyone that wants to make these at home, why would you not? The recipe can be found down below. And then also, we're going to be putting your baking playlist together. Mm. So all the music we've been talking about. Thanks all for joining today. Remember to like and subscribe, and thank you so much, Jodie. You're so welcome. Who do you want next in your bacon? Yeah, who do we want next? Who would you want next? Any of my friends. Any of them. Okay. That's fine. Mozart? Oh, yeah, yeah. Get him down there. Get him well. down there. <laughs> so maybe I will talk to you. The only way I know how to... Hello. Jack? Hi. Right, okay, you know I'm coming round for a bait. Yes, yes! So, I've been thinking, are there, is there anything you're particularly craving or wanting me to include in the bake? Um, well, you know me, I'm an absolute avid fan of uh, peanut M&Ms and all things chocolate based. So, something in that world? That is fine. Any particular biscuit, although I have already got an idea, so maybe leave that with me. Okay. And I'm thinking I might potentially add a little bit of an alcohol element but i know your drinks cabinet is good so. i was gonna say i've got i've got i have a lot of that so don't you, you i won't worry about the biscuit you don't worry about the alcohol together we'll make something great amazing okay look forward to seeing you all right bye hello hello oh, who's it hello. who's hey, it there's a whole camera crew here oh my indeed. goodness hey. hi 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 Oh, you. stop it. It's, it's, it's <laughs> come, come on. Come on. Right. Inside. Yes, I know. Inside. Excited to see. Come excited. on, guys. Hi. Hi, Hi everyone. Bakes. Hi, hello. Here's, this is my Here house. Here is Jack Garrett's abode. This is very strange. This is the first time Look, I've ever... I'm a, a bit of Bowie right oh, there. Oh, just a bit. Just a little bit. That. Oh, wow. Is that... <laughs> yeah. This is... <laughs> So it was my birthday, it was my 30th birthday. It was. A couple of weeks ago. And my management got me a cast of David Bowie's face made in 1983. The bake, the old Ziggy Stardust colour palette, Just but I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to cast this face no, in chocolate, not. but we'll leave Oh my God, that. but we, we'll could, you, we could. You could. You could no, make a negative say, cast out of it, couldn't you? That is pretty impressive. We've come to Jack's mm. to create a bake inspired by his music, fed by some of his favourite flavours and ingredients. So I'm going to drop my stuff and start baking. I'm just gonna run through, obviously, the ingredients I brought for the bake and just a bit of a sort of mood board that I put together. So... The M&Ms, I can just keep, have and You then, can maybe just have, there's, to be honest, there's more than we need, and then so then that's all just, good. You can leave and I can eat. Is it just the peanut M&Ms or is it, is it all M&Ms? It's just the peanut M&Ms. Is it? Yeah, literally. Because I was quite I, tempted to get a mix of the peanut and the chocolate ones. The peanut, the, the chocolate ones are good. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of uh, M&Ms anyway. I remember I was on a long haul flight once and I was really nervous. I was flying on my own and I got a family sized Thing of M&M's. Thing of M&M's. There's nothing to be ashamed and of I, And I ate, I ate through it in the majority of the flight and then in the two days after it. So on the peanut front, yes. also just some good old salted peanuts. Classic. They're going to be going in, so we're doing a brownie. Yay! I'll tell you now, brownie. So it's salty and sweet brownie. And then obviously, I know you like different types of biscuits, but I was thinking bring in a bit of a... More of a savoury, salt. salty yeah. edge. Peanut butter, I know this looks a bit, yeah. <laughs> a bit dodgy. That's that but... special new one branded peanut butter that you managed to find <laughs> smooth, at the shop down the road. Smooth peanut butter. So no one can get you... it, that's an absolute find. Well <laughs> it's done. It's Jack Garrett approved. Yeah. It's a special limited edition. Um, and have you ever made chocolate ganache or even know what the hell I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what chocolate ganache is. I've never made it. So this is just a bit of a crazy colour palette. Whoa. Obviously when I am baking, I always have music on. Yeah. This one, your music. Yeah. Time is one of your newest, it's not the, best favourites. Not the, not the herb, but the song. Yes, the song, the song, T-I-M-E. Disappointed um, in myself. So just like the explosion of colour and that. sound. So Oh, it's so great. On top of the brownies are going to be the m and M salted peanuts. So it's a bit like a, a mosaic of m and Ms. Does that mean we get to like bash them up? You get to bash them up, bash them up. There's lots of bashing up. It's almost like arts and crafts. Let's maybe put the oven and the kettle on yep. and start baking. There we go. 
There's a lot more ramekins than I thought there yeah, were. Yeah, I just love a ramekin. <laughs> Anyone that knows me knows I love a ramekin. We're gonna be putting the Ritz crackers. We want 50 grams of oh, these. Indy, Indy's here. Indy had them. She hears the rattling. This is Jack's dog, This, Indy. Is, this is my dog, Indy. You can't see because she's currently just oh, underneath the table. Yeah, I don't know, she can't have one of these, can I don't she? Think she can no, have one Indy, it's not. Mm. I know it's cruel to be kind here. I don't suppose, I reckon we want this side on the base of the brownie. So yeah, the, sort of the best side up mm. goes facing, facing down. down. So best side up facing down. down. We've got a good amount left and we're going to be putting this in the brownie mixture. Amazing. Um, and I'm going to Ooh, let a you, bit, little, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of crunch there. Little bit so of crunch. we'll put those aside. And then to make the actual brownie itself yep. is we've just got a pan here. Hello. And again, I'm just using like a set of digital scales. So you don't need to keep on having different bowls and stuff to measure everything into. So we're putting it to zero. And we're making six here today. Yep. And the full recipe will be on the website and also find it down below. It's a really easy recipe to remember. So it's it's sort of one egg to everything. So Indy, you're being quite see. ridiculous. Oh, see what she this she is what just, she does. That is fifty grams six. of butter in there. Yeah. Do you want to do the honour? We've got yes. we've got golden right. caster sugar here, but you could use just normal caster sugar. 97, 98. Yay! Yay! 100. Mm. Bang on, bang on. And then the secret ingredient to my brownies, this is like my basic brownie mix, is some golden syrup. What's that do? It makes it extra fudgy. I love it. This is then just going to melt. We're going to go through to your kitchen. And I I'm hope gonna, you, you said you are going to make me a coffee. coffee. Yeah, I'll make us a coffee. You can heat that up. I'll, I'll heat that I'll up. Make, I'll make the and coffee. I'll also take in, I've got a, this is, I'm we very fond of this spatula, spatula, but it is broken, guys. But I still use it, I still use it. So I will take said broken mm. spatula in with pan of butter, sugar, and golden syrup, and we're going to melt that down, mm. and Jack's going to make me a coffee. And Indy's going to come for Indy, you're going to come as well. Okay, so we're back at Action Station well, with a very well made coffee. Thank you very much. Left me hanging there, left me hanging. Almost. <laughs> and while we've been chatting and having our coffee, that the so good. the melted chocolate ah. and the caramel has cooled down a little bit because we're going to be breaking an egg in. We're also going to add a bit of vanilla bean paste. Yeah. And apparently you already I've have got, this anyway. I've, I've got that in there cupboard. I, got, I mean, I've got all of it in the cupboard all. somewhere. He's got all the sour cream too. Yes. To be honest, that's not looking that sparse. I love a condiment and you, you're sorted for the condiments. I've got all that sour cream. I'm just going to add a teaspoon worth of this and if you were doing like a flavoured like orange or mint brownie then you could add like orange extract or mint extract. Jack I'm gonna pass this over to you really? right, and you just wanna yeah just do that just just beat it all in so you'll see the brownie mixture itself just get a little bit shinier the yeah. velocity will improve Ooh. you see what's happening oh, yeah. so you're just looking at beating all the egg into the mix yeah. there you I'm go getting it. Yeah. That is beautiful. Look, Look at, at that. that. Oh my god. Oh. Very viscous. Very viscous. Very word, viscous. Word of the day. Word kids. of the day. Viscous. Viscous and salty and sweet. Now we're going to be adding in the dry ingredients. So I'm going to put the pan back on the digital scales. And you just want to add in 50 grams of plain flour. Do you want to do the honours again, yeah, sir? Go on then. then I'm just going to fold all the flour into the chocolate mixture. Oh God. There we go. I love baking so much, I don't do it enough. It, well, the great thing about this, it's just all in one pan. You haven't got to uh, like be... This, I hadn't considered that. Because sometimes, you know, they ask you to then transfer it to another bowl, but yeah. if you, as long as you let the pan cool down enough... You can just do it you all can just, And also, because I'm using like silicon spatula, I'm not like a using silicon a, spatula. a broken silicon spatula. <laughs> I'm not like using a metal spoon. Now, do you want to... The leftover Ritz crackers. Oh right, crackers. these have got going, haven't they? Now you can crunch. you can put them in a sandwich bag. You could smash them with a little rolling pin, or you could just use your let's you know hands in approach. Indy, come on, you can have the rest. And of this. then peanuts. So it's 50 grams, but we're going to be using some to decorate the top. So I reckon Ooh. if you put in about 30 grams of peanuts. If you want to fold all that crackers and peanuts in the mix. Now, at this point, you could also add a glug of alcohol. Well, now we were talking about this before the camera yeah. started rolling. 
So like a sweeter alcohol? So something like a mezcal? I've got lots you've got of... Cointreau. That would be good if you wanted to do a chocolate orangey one. Yeah, the think Cointreau mezcal, would be nice. It's going to be too many flavours if we go on chocolate orange. If we do in all of it, yeah. I think I'm going to use the Pentador. Pentador, which... Well, let's do... Let's do... That's it. Give that a smell. I don't have it. Oh, that's nice. Is that good? Yeah. Should we do that? Put that one in. All right, I was let's, about to get let's go. I was about to Here get we go. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> tell me, tell Just me one. Just put in like a shot's worth. Whoa. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, baking is a science. Oh, go on. There you oh, beautiful. That's not bad, is it? That is good. I hope I didn't overdo it. No, it's all good. <laughs> It's smelling quite a lot like mezcal. Mezcal. So while you're doing that, I'm going to ask you some questions. No pressure. On the, a music theme. Oh, okay. I love asking people this. Do you know what the year King number one was when you were born? I have no idea. Several people would have been born during it because it was, I don't know how many weeks it was there. Brian Adams. Everything oh, I everything do, I do. I, I knew do that. I knew that. There I've you go. So that, I've looked that up before. So was it Robin Hood? Look at the so, yeah. Was, has there been a number one at the top spot longer than that? Uh, what was it, like 50 weeks? It was ages. Or was it wet, wet, wet? That was a long one. Wet, wasn't wet, it? wet. Oh. That's a throwback. What was the first you gig you went to? Do you remember? Oh, wet, yeah. wet, wet, wet. No. Uh, so first gig I went to was Hearsay. No. Yep, at the Wembley Arena. I'm actually lost for words. It's brilliant, isn't it? That? That's what was, such a good first what was gig. Their, um, what was their classic? Wherever you go. Oh, I can see the video. Whatever you do. Yeah. Yep, pure oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. It was absolutely it was incredible. It was like the best show of my life. Do you remember Darius? Yeah. Colorblind, that song. He had his really famous audition where he sung um, Hit Me Baby One More Time. First of all, he's just this like glorious six foot handsome he was, wasn't goatee he? Yeah. ponytail. And his whole performance was like, my loneliness is killing me. In I, I must like do it really giving it. I still believe. Still and he goes into this bit, it is absolutely incredible. And his first single was a song called Colorblind. And it's an absolute banger. Put that on the baking playlist. I think we'll have bake. to. I think so. Nobody told me you seem so good. It's like a trip down memory lane. Nobody <laughs> said you'd be so beautiful. And he sung it like that. Nobody told me you the light. You're the light. You're the light. You're the light. When I close my eyes, Join in. I'm colorblind. <laughs> oh my god. If you could do a duet with anyone, Darius. Who would it be? Would it, no, be? It would be Darius? No, I. Duet. If I could do a duet with anyone. It would probably be Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Just because he's kind of my everything. Have you got a favourite Stevie track? I can't. Because, yeah, it's because I, I honestly believe it's impossible. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I've been so, really lucky to see him a few times, and every single time I've seen him, he's just. So, first gig was Hearsay. Do you remember yes. what the first single that you bought was? Yes, the first single I bought was uh, The Teletubby Say Eto. <laughs> the B side was Mary Had a Little. No, uh, Mary, Mary, Quite Contrary. This baking playlist is going to be great because we're basically going to put all of these tracks in. Jack. Honestly, I can't wait. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> now, with that lovely oh tray God. of brownies, Shall I go put it in the oven? we're going to put that in the oven. Okay. I'm going to clean the pan because then we're going to use the pan to make the peanut butter ganache. We're back, the brownies are baking and we've set up our own little bain marie. Now this is smooth, even though it is looking a bit clumpy because I'm staring in, but you could use a crunchy peanut butter if you wanted a crunchy ganache. Yeah. But we're just using smooth. we got enough crunch in the brownie already, haven't we? We have got a lot of crunch we don't need in the brownie. A, we don't need a crunchy ganache. So essentially, ganache. we are just replacing the double cream He's lost it. Oh, it's that mezcal. I'm done. I had, yeah, I had one. <laughs> or several shots of coffee. Yeah. Um, we could use sour cream, but we're using peanut butter. We're using peanut butter. So it'd be quite good if you were making this vegan. And now it's 50 grams, so 50 grams we, we could just quickly take the bowl yeah. off that, off that. Put it use our scales again, yeah. and then just put in 50 grams worth of peanut butter. If you wanted to cheat, you could just use a jar of like Nutella, or you could even use plain peanut butter, but you, we want that sort of dark chocolate color on the top. Right, so while the chocolate ganache, peanut ganache, shall I say, melts, we're gonna be breaking up some of the M&Ms yeah. and the peanuts yeah. to decorate the brownies yeah. with. Yeah. You, dr you drum, Jack. Yeah, I do, don't I? Drum, Jack. Yeah. Obviously go for a mix of bashing techniques. 
let's put them in there. And then, do you want to chop some? So, are we happy with that? Well, I think we can yeah, pull out. We can pull out. Pull look, they look very deeply roasted. Let's, get, let's pull those out. I'll pull these out <laughs> while you chop some peanuts. <laughs> I've got to individually chop some peanuts. <laughs> Good chopping of peanuts there, That's Jack. Chopping going. Good chopping. Actually, I think the brownies will be ready to come oh out the goodness. oven. I can Quick. smell a bit of mezcal, so I'm just going to go and check on the brownies now. Now, that was the shots that we had before they went off. Oh, I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> and I'll leave you chopping the peanuts. Yay! So what do we have here, Mr Garrett? They smell incredible. <laughs> I can't eat them just yet, though. Quite. I mean, you, you could, <laughs> to be Wait. fair. But if we want to see the Ritz cracker in all its glory, they just need to cool down a little bit. You can just leave them room temperature, put them in the fridge if you want to cool down really quickly. And then also, the peanut butter ganache has all Ooh. melted. To be honest, if you wanted it warm, take that straight out, ice cream and that on top. Oh my. Oh, but we do want to be able to spread that on top of the brownies, yes, so I'm going to leave both the brownies so got cool and the ganache to cool. <laughs> Peanut butter ganache has been causing a few issues. So it had obviously melted down and then we were like, oh, we want to spread it quicker. Let's put it in the fridge. It didn't seem to be getting to the right consistency, so popped it in the freezer, it in the freezer. and then it went to almost peanut butter ice cream. So I then melted it down again put it in the fridge. I was like, I'm going to just put it in the freezer just for a few seconds and it seized again. So I've now just got it sitting in the oven. But hopefully... Have you, have you made chocolate peanut butter ganache before? I have, but not under this pressure. <laughs> I normally just let it go to the right consistency, but you know. Okay. Come on. Okay. Man. Yeah. We're good. We're going back in the fridge. No, we're not. I mean, peanut butter ganache was meant to be something you could just whip up really quickly really at home, quickly. which you can do, but obviously you would want to let it just come to a spreadable, spreadable, what can't you spread speak? A spreadable consistency in your own time. But we're up against it, so it went to fridge to freezer, back in the oven. But we have got something here that I hope is going to be able to spread on top of our brownie. But, I mean, this may, be seen, this may be seen as a hack, but I've also filled out one of your very nice hack. coffee mugs. You're welcome. With some hot water. And I'm gonna get our little palette knife. Little palette knife. Just give it a little bath. <laughs> give it a little bath. We've got some kitchen roll here. Wipe it off. Wipe it off. Wipe, wipe it off. But the palette knife will now be warm. It's now warm. We just want this to almost be like a chocolate concrete. Does that sound appealing? No. <laughs> Jack Garrett's <laughs> chocolate concrete. Yay! And then with our M and M's. So it's almost like a bit of a oh, then you just like crazy it paving Whoa. mosaic approach. So we've got the full M&Ms, right. mix of colours, and mm, then... Four whole M&Ms. Four whole M&Ms. That's, and then that's if you insane. Wanna... You're a mad woman. Crazy. <laughs> I've listened after the ganache episode, we've had put the whole pack on. <laughs> and, then... and then put a few peanuts. A couple of those. So we were sort of looking for a mix of sort of like whole M&Ms, broken, broken M&Ms, M&Ms. You could do this brownie in like a tray or like a round sort of like Victoria Sponge-esque thing and then you could do a more design across the top. But these we're doing individual ones here. Mm. But as you can see, they come out with a little Ritz cracker on the bottom. You got a favourite movie soundtrack? I love them. Oh. <laughs> got it. <laughs> That beauty <laughs> shot. There we go. It's Thomas Newman's score. Yeah. On um, Finding Nemo, I think is honestly one of the most inspiring and emotionally evocative soundtracks to not only a Pixar film but children's film in general. Thomas Newman uh, also did American Beauty. Yeah. And it's very similar to that. So it's like very minimalist and lots of lovely like glassy pianos. But what have you got coming up this year then? That's, I'll tell you what, that's a very good question. Because uh, I don't know. <laughs> but that is also a good answer. I feel like my, my night is colourful. No, they are. It's because I'm hogging all oh, the Oh, you're M&Ms. hogging all of the, hogging all the, the crushed M&Ms? Well, even just not being able to perform, I can imagine. That's been tough. And especially yeah. putting a, like, um, putting an album out, which I did. Yeah, right at the point. Uh, right the at the point when, when everyone was locked inside. Well, if nothing else, you've created Jack Garrett Mezcal Brownies this year. That's a um, win in my books. So the full recipe is going to be on the website and I'm also going to be turning it into a visual illustration for you so you can follow along with pictures, <laughs> words and pictures. What are the little pots you've got up there? Oh, just Put a little bit. They're in. just like tasting pots with it. You have some mezcal with it. More mezcal. I think, to be honest, there's enough probably in the need. brownie. Probably don't need. Oh, yeah, oh. These little, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Dave. Phantom hand. That probably also fits yeah, in things, but... the perfect little oh, yeah, brownie. Go on, then. It's a little, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is beautiful. A little terracotta Jack Garrett salty and sweet brownie pot right there. It's its very own little cake stand. Uh, Francis, ex explain your um your, your design well, here. I was what is it that you've done? I was done? inspired <laughs> by your birthday card of David Bowie yeah. and said lightning bolt. Um, now I was thinking you could create the whole lightning bolt if you had several of these, but I like didn't have that much. Up. Stacked up. Have, yeah. But just to show people at home that if you wanted to create... But you can really do anything. You, you can, can really do anything you want with M&Ms. <laughs> these are still a bit warm. You can, if you want to put them in the fridge and then they get a bit more fudgy. Okay. So you, oh, what have we so got? Cross section. Well, that's not bad. Not bad. That's quite nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross section it as well. <laughs> oh yeah, look, mine's that's got good, even isn't more it? in. Bit right, of peanut. Crack. Okay, right. <laughs> Cheers. Right, cheers. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> it keeps going. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay. Oh, the 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 keeps on going. That's really good. The rich cracker is a very good touch. The splash of mezcal in it. Splash. <laughs> the glug is. It's a really. It's like a. It's a hint at the end. But the full recipe is on the baking playlist website, where there'll also be a visual recipe of Jack's special bespoke bake. And um, I'm looking forward to listening to the actual baking playlist with Darius. <laughs> Teletubbies. Teletubbies. Hearsay. Brian Adams. Brian Adams. Finding Nemo. Oh, yeah. And Stevie Wonder. Okay. I mean, it's pretty much, you couldn't ask for more. You could. Um, <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and like subscribe. And subscribe. <laughs> okay, now get out of my house now so, give I can, a, so I can eat all of these brownies by myself. Now give a mini microwave. Oh, I did a uh, mini mic microwave. <laughs> microwave. Imagine if aliens had built every single building in the world. Including this one. Including this one. Imagine if we were sitting inside a building built by aliens. Oh. That would be great. Oh. Oh. Someone's calling. Hello? Hey, it's Fran. Hey, how's it going, Fran? Hey, Fran. I'm not too bad. I'm just getting some stuff ready. Is there anything you're particularly craving? I kind of feel like something from like birthdays when we were kid, growing up. We had lots parties. of... We had lots of like chocolate and stuff. I used to have chocolate cake, cornflakes. I quite like that chocolate yeah, cornflake yeah. vibe. Okay, I'll see you guys soon. All right, see ya. Yeah, because I was just thinking, if this was all alien made. Here they are. Hello. Hello. Come on in. Sorry, I'm in the kitchen. That's all right. So we've got Ollie and we've got That's Henry. Great. All right. I'll show you around the pad. So this is this is the kitchen. Yeah. Straight into the kitchen, which is beautiful. We'll be in here most of the day, I'm sure. Things. We've got a little like sort of sitting kind of like writing room thing there. That's where the magic. Comes. Lots of guitars. Lots of magic. Yeah. This is amazing. Gigantic TV. Yeah. Gigantic TV needs. Yeah. Exactly. With a friend. We, want, we, want, we can watch a film later. Exactly. Like whatever. Well, we'll have got the snacks ready. Yeah. Oh, so exactly. All good. We don't even need to put the oven on this time, guys. We're not actually. Ooh. We're not actually baking. No. No, but oh, we wow. are creating. Okay. Okay. Oh wow! We're so is heat. this more like artwork? Is this low-calorie baking? Where you <laughs> no, just it's certainly draw not low-calorie. Yeah, yeah. Really no. I'll explain. Yeah. I'll explain. <laughs> Let's go in, sit down, have a cup of tea. Awesome. So we're at Sea Girls Kitchen HQ. That's what I'm liking to call it. Mm. And you guys have got a few ideas of what we might be making. Those I've got an idea. I think we're morning. making chocolate cornflakes. Chocolate cornflakes. I think we're, we're going to be making the cornflakes. chocolate next to cornflakes. All crunchy nut. Well, that's why I think. No. <laughs> I was going to think that. Chocolate. I was going to make them extra special, Henry. Just like we used to have. When Just we like were used children. to have. But did yeah. you ever used to have a Rocky bar in I, there? Oh, in I've your lunch. I've had a lot of Rocky bars. Lunch. in You my guys, life. let me know about your I Rocky bar. I haven't had it in anything before. <gasps> Not well, knowingly, anyway. And <laughs> we're going to be making a giant. <laughs> Chocolate awesome. crunchy nut cornflake cake. We love it. There we go. I was right. You were right, but also to make it an extra crunchy yeah. cornflake cake, have you guys ever made honeycomb? 
No, no. actually, I haven't. Has anyone here made honeycomb? No. 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 So it's really simple. That's exciting. Yeah. And we're going to be using honey rather than golden syrup to go well, in it. So we're going to have a extra sea of honeycomb, yeah. and then we're going to be pimping it with peanuts. Nice. Love and it. And then smashing that up, and then that also goes into the crunchy nut cornflake cake. This sounds amazing. incredibly crunchy. So I did a little bit of a, a mood board for you okay. guys, and then I'm going to be doing like a visual recipe at the end of it all. That is great. I love how you've used song titles again, again. What are we doing again, again? Again, we bash, are drum bash. up their rocky bars. I was that's thinking, that's your job. Salt Smack with the drums. Sick. <laughs> it's going to make us sick. Going to feel sick afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you may well yeah. do. Henry. Yeah. Do you want to start with the Henry honey? Henry honey. Henry, Henry honey. That's what they call me. Yeah. Right. How much are we putting in? Fifty grams. Let Is this look. local honey? <laughs> well. <laughs> oh. Henry you I've overdone it. Don't that's you... annoying. Let's, Let, let's get a little wait, bit out. Don't use that, because that's going to get a little bit out. Yeah, let's get a little bit out. Are we bring it back in here? Yeah, yeah, this is oh, again I'm my so classic sorry. broken spatula. Oh. No, wait. You did, you're done doing honey, so well. Basically, I should have done honey. We've got 50 grams of honey, and then we're going to be putting 100 grams of caster sugar. Now be careful. Sugar. I'm not going to make the same mistake Henry did. <laughs> it is in, in, oh, one, one gram. gram. One gram. Yeah. While the honeycomb is doing yeah. its thing, yeah. I'm always interested to know what your UK number one was when you were born. I know. Do you, you don't know, do you, do you know? Do you know? I, know. I do know. It's called Ebenezer Good. Do you remember that? It's like a dance song. Easy Good. Easy Good. Easy Good. UK number one song. My, Mr. Vane by Culture Bean. I've <gasps> never heard of that. Never heard of it. So Mr. Vane, call me Mr. Vane. Ollie, do you want to add a bit of um, Rory in by his tea mug? Yeah. So, so for anyone who doesn't know, Rory loves tea. Yeah. So this and is a little Andrew, honor for him. if he was a biscuit, he'd be a Rocky. There you go. Andrew's going to be making an appearance later. Got that kind You're of... going to be bashing him up. And if Andrew was here, these peanuts wouldn't make it to the cup. No, but so got that kind of text you want to put character. 50 grams okay. of salted peanuts in there. Oh, yeah. And this is where... It's like a science experiment. Ooh. So I've got some bicarbonate of soda in here yeah. and a teaspoon. Shake it over. Stop it. And then just like What's sort of happen? like no. mix that up. So it all starts oh. foaming. No. Yeah. I cannot believe it. That's what that's done. Oh, that's that is crazy. Very nice colour. Does that heat wow. up? Does yeah. it have like some kind of endothermic reaction? <laughs> I'm not sure. He's our and then, band, the band scientist. That looks and then, amazing. to make it even oh. more special, wow. yeah. you guys can just together on, just scatter it, it together, over with on, peanuts. Like go on, go on, Put go a bit on. of Andrew and Rory in yeah. the mix. That is homesick honeycomb. <laughs> we put it outside oh, rather than the cute. fridge because it's quite cold. There it is outside. on the barbecue. Outside. We've got water boiling in the pan for a bain marie. Oh, yeah. Do you remember what the first single that you bought was? I don't know about first single. I know the first albums Deep. I bought, 100%. Go on, I know the me. first album. I, I bought together uh, Eminem. Beautiful. Uh, the Eminem Show and Good Charlotte. Ah. Good, I think it was just called Good Charlotte. Yeah. Like, I got yeah, the Killer's Hot Fuss. That's a pretty first good first one. Which is your favourite track on the album? Actively. Favourite track on the album? I think the one I listen to now is like Smiles Like You Mean It. Smiles yeah. Like You Mean It. It's most. Yeah. The water is already pretty hot in there, no. and you see it's starting to melt a yeah, little bit anyway. We're getting that. Are you guys getting that? Are you guys getting yeah, that? Come on. Do you want to Oops. start bashing up? Oh god, yeah. There we go. Here's some this more. Job, so you so. want 150 grams Far of Rockies, one. but it's this is about one. 168 grams, so we're just gonna use the whole pack. There we go. <laughs> good good job. Job. We got it all? If you wanted it, you could use the caramel ones, but we're just using the original. <laughs> there we go, don't worry. It's chaos now. Well, that's why if they're in their cases, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is just totally done. There. That's not that's done. Oh, it's not done. Done. This one, neither. In regards to like favourite artists growing up, is there one that you all have in common? There's a few. All of us, apart from Rory, went to Leeds Festival. Yeah, yeah. yeah before, so way before we'd formed the band. So and, Kings um, of Leon. Kings of Leon were headlining. We all saw them together. Crowd surf Kings of Leon. That was like a big moment in yeah. kind of our that kind growing of, up. That set, was a big thing. It. That era, that same year, there was like Florence and the Machine coming yeah. out. That so was awesome. Kings of Leon, obviously. Kings of Leon, big time. Favourite. Which one would you want going on the bacon playlist? Kings of Leon. Yeah. It's probably got to be an only by the night because we're not going to be that's too clever. It, well, that's that, what it was, isn't it? Like, yeah. what's the first one that I really like? 
Is it Cruel? Cruel is Cruel. a great song. That's a great song. Second on the album, Cruel. Is we it? might Close let you put both, but I know that is good. Can we have Closer and Cruel? <laughs> While we've been chatting all things Kings yeah. of Leon, we've got a whole pan of crushed up, crushed up. Rocky Roads, and we're going to add now 150 grams of peanuts. Whoa. Then, do you want to pour out your, a breakfast serving of cornflakes? Yeah, my breakfast serving or the recommended breakfast no, serving? No, the seagull's very recommended different. serving size. Probably this to the brim. 300 grams. This is looking good. Really I might quickly just put this back over on the hob just to melt a bit more of the butter, but you've done oh, good work, guys. Really good. Yeah, that so looks that's like... That's a serious bowl If you scale that down, that just looks like a normal bowl of cereal. Who would you most like to oh, support? I'll tell you what, who we are awesome. Oh. Is that announced? No, but it will oh, be. I would love to support. Let's think about Arctic Monkeys. Yeah. I would also love to support. Just put it out there. Put it out into the universe. Yeah, universe. I'd quite like to do an Oasis reunion. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be when, if you they could be reunite, the warm -up act. that's going to be like a, a proper knife fight between every indie band to try yeah, and get to try and get on that. So are you Oasis or Blur? Oh, Oasis. I, think I, was Oasis. I love Oasis. Blur as well, but. Yeah. yeah. This is the beauty shot of the. Wow. We've got we've got a sea oh, that is great. of chocolate and butter in there. Now all we're going to do is mix everything in. Oh, yeah. I bet it that coffee yeah. is really. <laughs> God, I mean. Shout out to Story I've Coffee double, in one yeah, story I've had a double hitter. Oh my God. Doing good. Shall I do a bit of this as well? Yeah, go on. Let's get a bit of um, Rory and Andrew in the mix. Oh, and then we need to get the honeycomb. I nearly forgot about the homesick honeycomb. Oh, no, bird style. <laughs> <doesn't>. yeah. <laughs> How's it looking, Henry? It looks good. Oh, it what does do look think? good. It's solid. What do you think? Look, and then you see, you don't have to, if you wanted to, Ooh. you could just have it like this. It's all because... smoke and mirrors here. Look. <laughs> yeah, you just sit and have a slice. You could have a slice. Yeah. About the size of your. Don't be shy. Oh, 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 peanuts, 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 peanuts. Everywhere. We're going to put them back in there. Ooh. Should we just break this up? Yeah. Ooh. Do you want to try some? I do yeah, actually. Try a bit of a peanut, oh. so it's like oh. salty oh. and. That's After you guys. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm. Lovely. We're going to use the same. This is just like a six-inch cake tin. Yeah. So we're going to get another case. So we're going to put that in there, and then we're also going to make six individual ones okay. as well. Perfect. It's about two thirds of the mix goes in there, okay. and then the rest goes in the individual ones. I call myself Anthony Worrell Watt. What? <laughs> Anthony Worrell Watt. <laughs> Anthony Worrell Watt. What about soundtracks? Any favourite soundtracks? Drive. Drive. Oh, so I referenced that a lot over that, these that, last two albums. That would be one of my favourites. I love a real human hero. You yeah, know that song? Yeah. There's and, a song and the Kowinski, on, obviously, the main one. Yeah. There's a song on our new album called Sleep, Sleeping With You. Yeah. That is very drivey. Very drive drive influence. Could be on the drive soundtrack. Yeah. Now do a little bit in here because they want to have a bit of a peak on them. Yeah, they're a bit what I think has also got a great soundtrack, but not. I never listened to the soundtrack, but makes the film work so well is Scarface. Yes. It's all that 80s synth like yeah. dance stuff. You listen back and you like you're not expect. I didn't realise that how odd the music was over the scenes. Like they're on the beach and the music's just ominous. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's not even an ominous scene. Yeah, when you actually listen to the soundtrack. And then you listen to it and it's like, oh, that's building the tension already from there. We decorate. Decorate. So I reckon. As they say. Put a little bit of. Oh yeah. That's Break. Should if we you get breaking? Get breaking again. Enjoying. Get breaking and get making. Breaking. Oh. And, and then I reckon on. let's you put You can't a make an omelette without breaking you eggs. You can't. Guys. This is obviously a homage yeah. <laughs> to Homesick, the yeah. new album. So it's about being homesick for your hometown. Yeah, kind of. and Essentially, you know, at the beginning of lockdown last year, which is when we started, we finished recording the first album because of that. And then we went back. We're living at home basically, weren't we? My sister had had a baby and stuff, and it just like made me, you know, really connected to where I'd grown up, which is sort of in the Midlands. So you were Grantham, is that yeah, right? near Grantham, near Grantham. Yeah, so and just sort of life revolving around that, being a teenager, going through that, and then just thought about just life and how we gained our personalities and stuff. And the music you listen to for the whole of your life is kind of set when you're like yeah. 16, isn't it? You yeah. always well, don't they sound like the Beatles? You just don't remember when you first heard them. You've just yeah. always, known always known about them. 
So this is a bit of gold glitter. Is that is edible? edible? That's edible. <laughs> Do you want to pinch sure? a bit of that? It is. It is. A little pinch. And then, like, what flavour yeah. does it have? A flavour? Gold. Luxury flavour. Oh yeah. Gold. It's quite satisfying. And then this stuff. What is? Is this? That's like dust. Gold. Gold this dust. Is, oh wow. Gold. See? It's quite fun. Well, so is that different to that? That's different. That's glitter, and this oh, is dust. Oh damn. What? Can oh, you tell me the dust. scientific difference between glitter and dust? It's finer. It's finer. Dust. We'll let that set either in the fridge or outside, and then yeah. I reckon. Let's just jam while it's set. Let's just jam while it's set. Like and subscribe. Yeah, we're going to add some like jam. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and yeah. subscribe. Here, click the button. Seagulls.net. Seamless segue yeah. there. All right. One, two, three, four. Lemonade, ripped jeans. Nothing feels real when you're 17. I remember it always. Were you up for it? Always You'll stay there And we'll move on You'll never learn the words to my new song I remember you Always Were you up for it? Always On summer days When winter bites Especially on nights like tonight In our hometown Your old man singing his heart out Like being front row. You front row. You literally are. We're back here. The Seagulls homesick crunchy nut cornflake cake is yep. set. Set. Who set. wants to do the honour? Hey, oh, Ollie's already going in He's there. Like, hey, making a wish. This looks great. You can it? blow it out. It's got sparkle, it's got it, crunch. I like the way it salt. looks. Or are you just going to try and. I think just go. Just, yeah. I don't know. Would we get Ooh. them all on? I think so. It's certainly possible. That side. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Or. Oh, there. That's like. Maybe a bit yeah. of a tower. There we go. But are we going to try the big one or the little ones? Maybe in there. What, what's more mm -hmm. fun? It seems Maybe like it would be top. satisfying to cut that. Ready, Henry? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Yeah, like no, one, two, three. Oh. Go. There we go. Anyway, look at that fold of steel. Just like the elves, mate. Right, I'm going to. All right, we're going to do it. Yeah, this kind of like. It's, Ooh, I like the design. It looks like middle. stage that makeup, that doesn't it? No, it's a bit like Bat for Lashes. It is, isn't it? Daniel video, if you've seen it, <laughs> let's put that on the playlist. Natasha oh. should Daniel. be very proud. Okay. I crumbled it. Come on. You crumbled it? It crumbled a bit. It's sort of like you can't really take a slice, can no, you? Yeah, that's How should we, should we just... Um, should I try and I'm eat this handful? Eat handful, like, Ollie. Yes, that's what yeah, I was doing. To be honest, it did need to be in the fridge for a little bit longer, guys. Did it? We were a little bit impatient. Oh. But I don't think it should mm. affect the taste. What are you really getting? Good. Mm. I'm getting... I'm getting kind of smoky... I think that's the honeycomb. The honeycomb. It's Salty. Sweet, but it's not... It's got a dynamic kind of flavour. Dynamic. Mm. Yeah, I good. think it's really good. So, the full recipe can be found on the Baking Playlist mm. website. And there's also going to be an illustrated recipe that I'm going to create for you guys. Yeah. So like and subscribe. Obviously, buy the Seagulls album. Please. Homesick. Please. And, please, um, please. yeah. Deluxe. Lots of different formats. Can I have one of the whole ones of this? Yeah, go for it. Can I just take that? Take it. Thank you. Just back. No, these are all for you. Oh, wonder who this could be. Hello? Hey Dad, I know I'm coming around in a few days to bake and I was just wondering if there's any particular things you wanted me to add into the mix? Well, leave it up to you to be honest, but uh, I did have a vegan cake recently that was very surprisingly good. Okay, and I'll try and make it wombat themed to some extent too. Yeah, that'd be great. See you in a couple of days. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. I've just been promising the fact that coffee is inside. It is. It's freshly brewed. Freshly brewed. Uh, apologies for the tight Oh squeeze. no, this is typical London abode. Yeah. <laughs> 
don't do much cooking in this lounge. No. Funnily enough. <laughs> Dan has made me a lovely cup of coffee. Cheers. And we've got more to come as well. Just before we start the actual bake, I just thought I would show you what I'm thinking. I have made in the past Anzac koalas, another Australian animal, but I was thinking, let's do Anzac wombats. Has anyone ever made you a wombat bake? No, nope. quite simply. But I know you were saying about wombat poo. <laughs> Yeah, we've had a lot of people point out to us that they are cube shaped. They are cube shaped. Wombats yeah. poo squares. So, a sort of side note to this bake, as well as making Anzac wombats, we're going to be making sort of like a Rocky Road esque wombat poo in an ice cube tray. Oh, yeah. So keep watching. <laughs> What is, uh, what is Anzac? An Anzac biscuit, it's a sweet biscuit popular in Australia and New Zealand made with oats, flour, sugar, coconut, butter, syrup, baking soda and water. Oh, wow. So we're going to be making it vegan by using like a dairy-free butter, but you can use obviously whatever butter you've got to hand. And then we've got chocolate covered almonds for the nose and then the fur. It's a misc of sort of bourbon biscuits which are accidentally vegan and then just one Weetabix because it gives more that fluffy ah. fur. Have you ever done the Weetabix challenge? No. Where you have to eat as many Weetabix as you can, but Dry. without drinking water. Oh, it's it's impossible. Have you done it? Yeah, I did once in my student days. Um, right. Real proud moment. Do you want to do it again today? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> We're going to measure the dry ingredients into a bowl. Put in 100 grams of oats. Yeah. That's like the base of our cookie. It's a bit like a flapjack. And then 100 grams of, I've got golden caster sugar here, but if you had caster sugar, you could use that. You could even use light brown or muscovado. It will just sort of change the color and taste of your Anzac biscuit slightly. Looks like a wombat paws it have been in there. It does look like sugar. a wombat paws has been in there. There it is. Which wombat? Uh, mine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And then 100 grams of desiccated coconut, Yeah. straight on top. We're making a good batch of wombats, but if you wanted to make half the amount, then obviously just use 50 grams of everything. There we go. Bang on. And then 100 grams of plain flour going in. That's our dry ingredients. So if you just want to give that a little mix. This is dairy-free butter. So this is if you wanted to make these vegan, yeah. but you could as well just use normal butter. A little bit more. Oh, nailed that it. That was bang on. We want a tablespoon of golden syrup. Okay, so 25 grams. 25 grams. Now that is there perfection. Go. Sweeter the better. So we've just got the butter and the syrup in the pan and we're gonna now take it into your kitchen to melt. We are now going to be adding some magic ingredients to the syrupy mixture. So this is going to give your Anzac cookie a nice sort of like crispy crunch. Bring the coffee in the mix. Oh yeah. I'm going to do a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda and then we want a tablespoon of coffee. I've never actually used coffee in this, but when in Rome or at a one bucks flat. Yeah. So it's going to go in the pan with the bicarb and then going to mix that all together and it sort of starts to froth all up and then we're just going to transfer that into the dry ingredients. They don't call me Dan the Mixer Haggis for nothing. Do you like haggis? Uh, I bet you've yeah. been asked that before. I mean, every time I go to Scotland, it, they're like, can, can we see your driver's license, please? Because this is, well, A, they don't believe you, but also it's obviously kind of quite rare. It's about 50 grams. You're just like getting the mixture together and you're just putting them down on the tray and then you just want to flatten them slightly. They will spread a little bit in the oven, but like I said, these are more like Anzac cookies rather than the traditional really flat Anzacs. Ooh, 48 grams. Is there a prize if you get 50 bang on? Do you want there to be a prize? Kind of would like a little prize maybe. What should the prize be? Answers down below. Little cheer. Ooh, 49. That's worth a cheer. Three. Hooray! Do you know, Dan, what the UK number one was when you were born? Michael Jackson? No. I mean, you'd do well if you didn't know. Queen? No, sadly not. Genesis? No. I don't know, I think you're going to have to Should tell me. i put you me. out of your misery. Frankie goes to Hollywood, relax. Oh, right. And Is then, fellow Scouser, wasn't it? Exactly. And then Murph was also Frankie goes to Hollywood. Oh, wow. Right. But two tribes. Okay. And then Todd was actually fame. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you, all together. <gasps> 51. 51, <laughs> that just to serve a cheer. So have you guys got sort of similar tastes in music? Yeah, all fairly similar. Like when we first got together, we kind of bonded over Radiohead, Smashing Pumpkins, also like Elliot Smith and yeah. there's more folky stuff. It's nice when you've got some different tastes, but also 
you need to have the common ground a little bit because and you need to have some of the same references to be able to explain what you're thinking maybe for a section of a song or whatever. Do you guys all like the Beatles though? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about a favourite Beatles track? I know that's really difficult to choose. I'll say Blackbird simply um. because it was like this guitar piece that I wanted to learn like so badly when I was young. I had a friend who could play it. Yeah. And I was just, you know, I was like 14 or whatever and just always used to say, can you just play that song again? It's still one of the go-to songs, you know, and I pick up a guitar, just start playing it. All my life You are only waiting for this moment to arrive it's such a lovely guitar, <laughs> it's it? oh, just bro. Is there a particular lyric that, if you had it on a t-shirt or something that just particularly stands out? I actually like in one of our new songs, Ready For The High, there's a, a lyric, I should be thinking moonbeams, which I really like. And the idea, you could have someone's head there with just moonbeams like exploding out the head. Yeah, something. Because I love the artwork for the new album. So that's E-Boy, their artwork's so cool. And yeah, Memphis was just like, oh, I wonder if He'd be up for it and he was and kind of once he agreed to doing it then it influenced all the kind of the, whole, the artwork yeah. in general we've pretty much got our cookies there or we mm. can just eat it raw like me and dana so we're going to take these through lovely. to the oven and they bake for about 10 to 15 minutes till they're sort of like slightly golden brown mm. i'll leave you eating there <laughs> they smell good Ooh. oh wow here we go one lot Obviously, you can just cool them on a cooling rack as most normal people do, but we're just coming outside here. Cool them a little bit quicker. Yeah, on the chilly rooftops on of London. On the chilly rooftops of London. Chim chimney, chim chim. There you chimney, go. Chim. This is a real musical bonanza <laughs> we've got in store for you. We are going to create the toppings to turn them into Wonzaks. Wonzaks? Wonzaks, I like that. <laughs> Did you know Bourbons are accidentally vegan? I didn't. Would that be a biscuit of choice, Dan? I do like a bourbon. Bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. 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 Yeah. What would be your absolute biscuit of choice? Probably just a regular digestive. Really? Not even chocolate covered? Yeah, chocolate, yeah. Um, Milk or dark? Dark. You could obviously make wombat fur with dark chocolate digestives, but we're going mm. bourbons. You want five bourbon biscuits, and then to create like that sort of more tufty fur, a Weetabix. Put that all in a like a sandwich bag, and then this is when your drumming is going to come in to throw. Oh, yeah. So just beat it with a rolling pin or a drumstick. I have a drumstick as well. You can see which one works best. There we go. I'll do a test. That works really well. You've got to try and guess which song. Okay. If you ever leave. No, ready for the high. Ready for the high. You can go rolling. Oh yeah. Rolling, rolling. There we go. But you're going to break into Limp Bizkit then. <laughs> you toured with the Rolling Stones, didn't you? Uh, we did one show with them, yeah. That Listen, was... one show is enough. Oh. One show is definitely more than I ever thought we'd get to play with them. All our family came over as well to it. Got to see Charlie Watts play as well before he sadly passed away. Oh, so did he pass on stunning. some drumming? I said to him, uh, thanks so much for your music and beats. I spent many an hour learning to play along to uh, the Stones in my teenage years. And he was like, okay, cool, great to know. <laughs> like, you know, it was very, like, they're just, they were all just really nice. If we were to add a Rolling Stones track to the Bacon playlist, is there oh, any yeah. one you particularly like in there? I'd say like Wild Horses for the end of the playlist, yep. but then Sympathy for the Devil is a great opening to the playlist. We could maybe put both on. We could sandwich, yeah, sandwich we could it, it. And as everyone knows, the playlist can be found on the website or via Spotify. But we've now got a bag full of wombat fur. Cheeky little bag of wombat fur. That's right. So that's going to be the fur. We've got in here, these are some chocolate covered almonds. That's going to be the wombat nose. And then these are just some little chocolate pearls in here. And they're going to be making the wombat eyes. But again, if you wanted to, you could just use chocolate chips. And then this is just a little bain marie of melted chocolate going on here. And this is what we're going to be using to stick the ears to the wombat. <laughs> I'm yeah. doing this. Cover the wombat surface and that will stick the fur to it. Have you ever met a real wombat before? Never. Have you? Yeah, held them. How big one. are they? Well, the little one's probably about that big. And then the, the, the adults, are, they're massive. They're like tanks. Bigger than Indy? And they're, oh yeah, way bigger. They like to burrow into your arm, like the little baby. It was oh. so cute. 
We've got our Anzac, cooled Anzac cookies back, and then the chocolate has all melted here. You were asking me earlier, how do we make the little wombat ears? Yeah. So you use one of your Anzac cookies. Probably choose the one that is your least happy with. They all this look one, good, to be they honest. They do, but... What I'm going to do is just sort of like break off a little bit and these are going to be sort of you're going to be sticking them on to be the wombat ears i see you can if you want use like even scissors and any extra little trimming bits we're going to be using for the wombat poo okay so nothing is going to go to waste that's a big one bit big ears okay there you go that's how i do it at home i wasn't going to do that dan mm. but i'm glad you've shown eat your wombat's ears there we go probably i'm yeah. loving them listen this is your wombat yeah that's it's your wombat big ears so i've just got a paintbrush so the melted chocolate is going to be both like glue and paint i'm just going to attach it to the wow. side of your wombat's head what was the first gig you went to you know what it was probably um mary black you know the irish yeah. folk singer supported by the rankin family amazing like a canadian band where um, was that in that liverpool was at the philharmonic hall in liverpool wow that would so be a nice little interlude in the playlist yeah song by mary black um no frontiers uh-huh such a great song that'll be on there that'll be on there then once that's stuck on we just literally dan start painting your wombat just oh, go around the side the ranking family gillis mountain this is like one that our fam like we sing every christmas with like us and all the now? I took a trip up Gillis Mountain on a sunny summer's day. There were ruts in the road and the four-wheel drive spun its wheels in the rocks and the clay. No one in the world will know this song, basically, but all our family like Your it's, family it's just will. a Christmas classic. And actually, another band I love who are, I didn't realise, but the singer is related to the Rankin family is, you know, the band Always. Yeah. Yeah. Molly Rankin. I really like Always as well, and I was like, no way. I've covered my Anzac and ears in melted chocolate, and I'm then just going to scatter on the edible wombat fur. There we go. What, liberal with the fur? Quite liberal. Go liberal with the fur, because we can always tap a little bit off. You were talking about Radiohead and Smashing Pumpkins. Which particular tracks would you want on the playlist? Probably go for Stand Inside Your Love. Yeah. One of the riffs we always play, like Cherub Rock from um, from Siamese Dream, we always play that in the like, practice room. That How's is a that? good looking wombat. Yeah. I'm going to take a chocolate covered almond for the nose, put a little bit of melted chocolate on the back of the almond, and then just position that on the, and just press it down. This is the nose? This is the nose, so we can smell. Apparently they've got a very good sense of smell. All right. They haven't got a very good sense of sight no. because they're nocturnal, but good sense of smell. Hmm. Beautiful. It's just got like a little plant <laughs> stick here, but you could use the end of like a paintbrush or so just make like his little inner ears or you could like dab a bit of chocolate on. There we go. For his eyes, I'm just going to take a little cocktail stick and just make a little hole. I'm going to then just get two little chocolate pearls and pop them in. But if you wanted to, for a really wide-eyed looking wombat, you could oh. use chocolate chips. That's great. There he is, yeah. Mr. Wombat. You've obviously made your own one. Mm -hmm. Do you reckon this is Murph or Tord? That's more Tord, I think. More Tord. Mm. So we've just got to make Murph, yeah. and then we will crumble up some of the leftover bits to make our wombat poos. Yeah, great. As you do. <laughs> I thought we could do them in like ice cube trays, because they're square shaped. Any particular wombat poo shape preference? Oh, they that, that looks maybe the most cube-like. They're, they're great as well. And we get loads. We could do a mix. But maybe one of those, one of do those. Do a mix of these. Yeah. So do you remember the first single that you bought, or album? Yes, um, it was on cassette. Um, it was Reckless by Brian Adams. Really? Yeah, we went to see him live. Um, and yeah, I just, I loved Reckless. It was so good. I'm waking up the neighbors. Yeah. First single actually was um, Smells Like Teen Spirit, because I remember hearing it. Well, I saw it on MTV. I heard it in a shop as well, and then I was like, oh, I love that. And I went and with my pocket money, like bought the, the single and became a huge Nirvana fan. A huge Nirvana fan. Did you have the poster? I actually had, um, I had Spice Girls. That was when I was like 10, 11. And then it gradually sort of, I got to the point where I was like, oh, got rid of all them, stopped playing the flute, started playing the drums and got Trans like Nirvana and, uh, you know, Food Jerry, Fighters Jerry and Green Day. Over. Which Spice Girl track? More of the slow ballads or more of the... Yeah, I guess two become one. Yeah, that was... There was a ring on it or something, wasn't there? 
um, and my dad came back from somewhere and like he bought us a present in the airport and that was it. And then you know at that age, like we didn't have Spotify and stuff, you just listen to whatever album you got over, over and over and, and over, over again. again. So I'm going to do three of those shaped ones. You could also, if you wanted to, do this in one big tray and then cut little squares. This one looks like a bear. They've got a little, they look, a bear, little bit like, of a bear look. They are like mini bears. Do you ever had an Anzac biscuit before? I don't think so. Like when we've been to Australia, we have, you know, they've, we've had like veggie mite and yeah. I ate a whole spoonful of Tim that once. And Tim Tams, yeah. So any Australian Wombat fans, if you wanted to make Wombat fur and you didn't have Bourbons, you could use Tim Tams. Are we doing Sorry. a mouth? Would you want to do a mouth? I suppose they should sing, really, they shouldn't they? need to be able they? to sing a little bit. I reckon if you made it. Like two little lines, maybe. Oh, yeah. That's him more sort of like singing out loud. Aww. These are some little baby, Aww. baby wombats. That was done with half the mixture. So if you wanted to make a little family of wombats, and then these are the wombat poo. Brilliant. Do you want to smash a wombat poo out? I'd love to. These are not coming out. They're not. <laughs> the poos are not coming out. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> How do they taste? Mmm. Basically just like a little chocolate what did you bar. Put in there? That was just the sort of remnants of the Anzac and then bits of the bourbon. Everything that you'd find in the wombat. Yeah. Hey. Um which one who's who am I again? Oh I made you. Okay. I might eat that first. Eat that you? first. There we go. Oh Dan, and the Dan's, ears stayed on. Yay. Look at that. Look at that. Structurally wow. sound. Are you good how are you gonna eat Rather. him? I think I'm just gonna go straight for the face, to be honest. Straight in. Is it everything and more, Dan? Is it what you'd imagined an edible wombat to taste like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's beyond my wildest dreams, to be honest. Can you imagine if people turn up on tour and they've made their own? So obviously the tour's on at the moment, so you will be actually going to Australia. Hopefully, yeah, if um, restrictions are lifted and we're allowed to go. That'll be in June. Yeah. We're going there. Um, and you're at the O2 here in London on the 15th of April. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I mean, just... To be honest, after the last couple of years, I've not really been able to do any shows. Just just getting to play the, the the new album, especially like live, and it kind of it's it's always the final, the final sort of piece in the puzzle of from you know making the songs, recording them, and then finally when you get on stage and you see the people's reactions, well, and I like guess, that like, moment. It's just knowing so which tracks particularly people resonate with mm, more. Yeah, Is there yeah. any one that you particularly love on the album? It's really hard. It's always like picking your favourite kid yeah. or whatever. But um, <laughs> I'll go for people don't change people time does i think it you know is. we were asking you earlier yeah. i think that should be the lyric so yeah let, maybe that that could be a good that t-shirt could be the one or an apron oh Although yeah we've not worn aprons here today yeah. thank you so much dan for being part of this baking playlist do like and subscribe go and support the wombats bake edible wombats and i think are you going to um see us me, out yeah give me a little bit of walkout music And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>
biscuity. Yeah. Biscuity. Yeah. So you're gonna have, and then we're gonna have cream in there. So you're gonna get biscuit, meringue, Ooh. cream, and zesty lemon curd. I love. Yeah. This is like my favourite part. I mean, obviously the eating will be my favourite part. <laughs> But like the fact that you can and visualize all the lyrics, it, all the little stuff. things, and you don't just write whisk, you draw a whisk. I draw a whisk. You guys did a cover of Coldplay's Yellow. <gasps> did we did. did, we did, we did. So, so it all fits with all the fits brand. In. And the first <laughs> track on the album, Sweet Time. Yeah, which uh, is not what you get when you're on Bake Off. Well, no, it's not what you get. And to be fair, <laughs> meringues do take a sweet time to bake. But to be honest, by the time we've been chatting away, they'll probably be baked. So we've got an egg roller coaster. Is it a roller yeah. coaster? I mean, it could be a roller coaster. I mean, I, d I don't know. I've never it does been brave look like enough it's to. It's got roller coaster. coaster. <gasps> Ooh, oh my god, that's the first no. time I've been brave that, enough to that. do that. Have you guys made meringues before? I have. I haven't. We're going to do a technique where you obviously use egg whites for meringue, and we're going to be using the yolks for the lemon curd. But you can normally, like, the recipe could say four egg whites and say. 200 grams of caster sugar, so like 50 grams of sugar per egg. But they all come in different sizes. So you should weigh so the So the best thing is to weigh the egg whites and then double the amount, and that's what you need for the sugar. Oh, that's actually really handy. So that's what we're going to do okay. today. Whose eggs is this? Polly. Polly. So Polly was after um, Peaky Blinders, Polly. Oh. Da, da, da. <laughs> oh, they look. They should be quite fresh because they would fresh. have been laid today, so it should be pretty easy. So I'm putting the egg white into the bowl and I've got it on a set of digital scales so we'll be able to know but equally so you could. Do you know what I was going to guess yeah. about 30 grams so I'm quite proud of it's myself. It's 36 grams yeah. and then we're going to put the egg yolk in there. Oh look how fresh that is. Oh, oh I feel really nervous. Oh wait. Oh oh wait. Oh there you go. There we go. You're doing a good job there Lizzie. Chuck that in the yolk oh, bowl. There you go. Way. There you go. Right and then we'll measure that into here. So we're at 67. There we go. Oh, you can see the colour difference between you can. the store bought and yeah. the freshly laid. The, uh, the War Thomas eggs are definitely fresher. Look More at that. orange. Look at that. Wow. Uh, we've got 135 grams of egg whites in there, so who wants to do the maths? Lizzie. <laughs> You're so mean. I never pass my maths GCSE. 270 grams. Okay. <laughs> 270 grams. <laughs> oh, cast the sugar. So I'm just going to put that into a bowl, basically double the amount of sugar to egg whites. We're just going to break up the egg whites just for about sort of like 30 seconds. It needs to actually come up to like almost, you can still, still a bit hold light. the bowl over your head before we start adding the sugar. Oh, wow. Who's going to see if it doesn't fall down from their head? Do you want to do it? No, check it. Shall I do it? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of volumized, but now we're going to be adding the sugar and it's going to be getting so much more glossier. You want to add sort of like a teaspoon at a time and um, let it sort of all whisk in and we're going to put it up to full speed. This should definitely now. Should we do the oh, stiff it's so pearly white. Test. Look at that. Oh. Oh, oh, it's like a Mr. Whippy, isn't it? It's what like, yeah, it, make, it makes me think of Tintin's <laughs> hair. Like, it's like a wave in Moana. You, have you got a favourite Moana so glossy, track I don't know that we could put see. on the baking playlist? Shiny. Oh, shiny! It's all shiny. Oh, yeah, we're from the guy from the Flight of the Concords. Here we go. Should I do that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, it's going everywhere. Sorry, there's only a tiny bit there, but I don't like, want to take it off you. Oh, oh, what's it like? It's very good. <laughs> we're going to make, like, mini pavlovas. And one way of keeping them that they're all the same size, I'm just going to use the top of a jar lid, but you could use like a cookie cutter. I'm just going to draw around with a pencil. We're going to make six full ones, and then we're going to make some little meringue kisses to decorate them with. We're actually going to pipe the meringue over one of the shortbread biscuits, so it's hidden on the base. So I've realized that the piping nozzle that we're going to pipe the meringue nest with, the actual base is about the size of the middle there. So we'll use that to know it's that the size, size of there. The meringue kisses. But you don't have to be that exact. You can just crumple up the paper so it lays flat, but we're going to be using the meringue as our glue. If you just stab some of the meringue, do you want to turn it over, Lizzie? Oh yeah, and go then on stick then. it to the stick it to the tray. We're going to use stick one of these the star piping nozzles. Pop it down, and then yeah, if you want to just Where do you want me cut to about it? there, I reckon, Catherine. Yeah. There we are. You hold it there, Catherine. Obviously, 
Catherine and Lizzie are both twins. Two minutes apart, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So who's the older one? That would be me. Do you know what the UK number one was when you were born? Do you know what? No. But I feel like we should, and that's shameful that we don't know that. Well, I looked it up. Did you? Yeah. And to be honest, it was a bit of a trip down memory lane. You were very <laughs> close to being a Take That track. Oh, OK. But you were Doop by Doop. Do you know As what in... that one is? Doop 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 Keep going. Keep... What was the first single you guys both bought? First Avril single. Was it? And it was random. Avril... I think it was Avril Lavigne. For me, it was Avril Lavigne. Oh, yeah. I think it was... Skater Boy. Oh, Skater Boy. Or maybe Boy. Complicated. I like, think it was Probably Avril was Lavigne. the same one because, th you know, yeah. we did everything together. I'm going to start on, like, just want to pipe inside the circle and try and keep the piping bag upright. Do a little bit on the base, so that's covered, and then do another border around Is that going to be filled with lemon? That's going to be filled. But this is what I was thinking of piping with one of these. Just so it sticks to the base, I'm going to put a little bit of meringue on the biscuit so it's not going to move around. And then do the same thing, but you're oh. covering up the biscuit. So satisfying to watch. We're going to do some little ones. Just press down and pull up. Do you want to do a biscuity one? Should I do a biscuity yeah, one? Biscuity one. <laughs> well done. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, that is. You can do some little kisses. If you're ever doing the kisses, you can put a Rolo under the bottom. Ooh. So I do a mini or a That's a really good yeah, idea. And then it's like a sort of like a caramelly chocolate centre. <laughs> I don't want the hair to go. That's good. Okay, yeah. one circle. And then a circle in the middle. To be honest, the bottom bit doesn't matter too much as long as you're staying inside the circle. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. We're going to put them in the oven. So the oven's on at 120, 100 fan gas mark a half so it's a very low oven temperature and these will probably take about two hours and these ones will take about an hour these are the four egg yolks that we had from the eggs we used earlier we want 100 grams of caster sugar do you want to do the honours lizzie oh yeah go on then 100 grams oh. Oh. it's gonna go wrong oh. Oh no, it's 150! It's all oh. right, that's why we have spoons. I think you um, chose the wrong person to extra, do that. Extra, extra <laughs> sweet lemon curd coming at you, thanks to Lizzie. This is actually just because I had 100 grams of butter left, mm. so we don't need to worry about measuring that out. But we just want to... You cut butter like veg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you're peeling you know, a you're peeling an apple. <laughs> you can obviously do this on a board. Or if you want, if, really you, if you don't down. have a knife. <laughs> Pull it apart. <laughs> lemons. 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 We want the zest and juice of two lemons. So you can each have a lemon, girls. Oh, you're Thank giving us you. the worst job. No, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am, basically. <laughs> what about first gig you went to? Katie Tunstall Katie at Tunstall. the Roundhouse. At the Roundhouse, oh. yes. When you are creating your music and not making lemon curd, does one do more of the lyrics? It's very collaborative. Very, this yeah. is more like, I would say, takes the lead on the melody more. Like, yeah. we'll be in a session and she'll just start bursting out with these big old... Da, 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 <laughs> da, 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 da. Like that. Did we think that was Enya? Yeah. Yes, it was. Probably so quite good while the meringues are baking, you know, and something soothing. We're big T-Swift fans, actually. Yeah. Oh, if you've grown so up wholesome. with her, you're like at the perfect age for each album. So the most recent one feels is like the most good? in keeping with what we want That's to listen to. Were you, are you fans of Bon Iver and the National? Yes. 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 Um, and Absolutely. Oh. Also, if you wanted to make orange zest, you could do exactly the same, or lime zest, or a mix of lemon and orange if you only had one of each fruit in the kitchen. You can even do like um, raspberry curd. But we're wanting the juice of the lemon, but we obviously don't want the seeds. So one way I do is I actually use a sieve. Just cut the lemon in half. And then if you just squeeze straight over the sieve. I also do this for if you're doing like a lemon drizzle cake. How did the cover of Coldplay's, I was about to say lemon, yellow come about? In lockdown, like every other artist of some sort, they were trying to sort of stay creative because we couldn't perform. Yeah. And so we just started playing around with logic on our computer and just doing lots and lots of layered harmonies and, and we just were doing, doing a cappella songs. Covers. And we did yellow and po posted it on our socials. <laughs> Okay. Did you catch it? You had yeah. butterfingers. Yay. <laughs> and then we just posted it and it went down really well. So we were like, well, let's release it because we've already recorded it. So then yeah. we did. Here, this is all you need to make lemon curd. It doesn't look very appetising right now, no. does it? And we're going to be using the old Ban Marie method. 
Can you smell the lemon? I can smell the if lemon. If you wanted to, you could add a bit of lemon cello. Jack would like that. So did you tour with Jack or were we you? We did. We did the, a European tour with him in May 2019. Feels like and it was really ago. fun. We did Candle not know light. what was in store. Yeah. yeah. Candle. Uh, I'm not going to sing it. Candle. No, I'm doing it. <laughs> and then obviously James Blunt was on. He was on the last Lockdown. album and we recorded that song halfway, which is his song that we then guested on. Yeah. One of our first ever arena shows, he came up to us and went, Now don't f it up. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, <laughs> Oh, sh we totally will now. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to swear on this programme, but well, it's, we just, fine. Yeah. it's fine. We'll beat you so, out. We'll be, yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Obviously, you guys duet together, but is there anyone you'd love to also collaborate with? I mean, John Mayer John is one oh, of our favourite artists. We have actually just come off from covering his song Stop This Train. We covered it before the tour and then we took it on the road and we were like, actually, this is quite fun, maybe we should release it. And then hopefully John will hear it and go, hey, guys. <gasps> I'll collab with you. I'll collab with you. <laughs> do you reckon what do you reckon Big his, dreams. his favourite biscuit would be? What would John Mayer's favourite biscuit be? Oh, I think it would be something be? very complicated because he seems no, like a very complicated character. I think character. it would be something quite simple. Okay. I think it would be something like shortbread. Was that just because we've been using shortbreads, yes. is he? <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be something shortbready with a bit of lemon and meringue in there. Are you a dunker? Not all the time, but I forget about it. And then when I do, I'm like, why don't I do this why more? Why don't you do this all the time? A bit like a bath. I am a dunker. I've done a Twix. Have I don't dunk in the bath. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> or dunk a biscuit in the bath. Or just dunk it in the tea or, while you're sat in the bath. That'd be quite Things nice. get very weird. That, that, that would be like, I'd be worried that it would fall in my bath. Anyway, oh. at this point, girls, we need your whisks. Okay. <laughs> I'm also going to turn the heat down because it's getting a little bit, getting a little bit getting of a steamy bath. Getting harder Do you want Nelly on the playlist? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Can you feel it's thickened up a little bit? Yeah, you can see like tracks. Ooh, it smells You're leaving great. tracks with your whisk. We have got the curd back on the table and we're going to pour it into a jar. You can, if you want, you can sieve the lemon curd. That's more if you're doing like a raspberry curd, but to be honest, okay. we're going to keep it rustic. Oh. Oh, that looks so good. I mean, we're obviously using this for the pavlovas, but if you wanted to, this is just good oh, on toast, just, yeah. on crumpets, on, on scones, on everything. Straight from the <laughs> jar, Lizzie. So it makes about a jar's worth of lemon curd, which is good, because apparently you love it. I love it. Mm. That is good. Oh, that's really good. And it's not too sweet. No. If you want it sweeter, just do Lizzie's approach. <laughs> Boof. Okay, so the lemon curd's just chilling in the fridge. So the girls are going to give us a jam. Yes. Yep. You ready? And I've got pocket. And you've got pocket. I've got pocket here. She's, so She's completely chilled. The time makes bolder. Children get older and I. Well, I'm getting older too. So take this love and take it down. And if you climb a mountain and you turn around, and if you see my reflection in the snow covered hill. Well, maybe the landslide will bring you down. We're now going to whip the cream. Lizzie, you ready? So tell me um, the speed. Well, just go as quick as you want to go. We just need it sort of like soft peaks. This is proper exercise. Should we, should we do like a baton change? One, two, three, there we go. Okay, here we go. We do it in different directions. Oh, I think it's thickening up though, quite quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've never really Cat. tried it. I've always then. just used the KitchenAid because <laughs> I'm so lazy. Just, yeah. I've never whisked Don't cream you before. See? That's soft pretty peak. good. I reckon that if you're putting it in a piping bag as well, stop there because it's going to get thicker when it goes through the piping bag. Mm. There we go, so we can start. Can I hold it over your head just in case? No. no. <laughs> These are yeah. two bicky ones. Two bickies. Two bickies. I might have a bicky one. Are you going to have a bicky? We've all got bicky ones now, haven't we? No, we've had too much sugar. Right, okay. <laughs> what we're going to do is just take a little bit of the middle out. If we take our cream, oh, I'm just going to spoon a dollop. 
in there. You could, if you wanted, put a little bit of lemon curd in the base. Really I might do you, that. You do, I'll that. do that. It's your pavlova. Yeah, you can put as much lemon in it as you want. So were you girls Spice Girls fans? Were you too young? No, we were We were the perfect age, but the problem is, is that everyone in our year was listening to the Spice Girls and we were listening to like Johnny Cash. Oh. Because we were in the sort of country thing. Where did the influence from that come? Did your mum and dad? Yeah, and our grandma lo loved Loretta Lynn and Patsy Cline, so we were very much in the whole... And we're big Dixie Chicks fanatics as well. Yeah. Now the chicks. Now, I'm going to go for a dollop of the lemon curd in the middle, and then I'm going to go for a whole biscuit, and then mm. take some of these little... Oh, little beauties. You can even Looks if you like want. Looks like a, a fried egg in the middle. It's a little fried egg. Like How with a little you like in it? your eggs in the morning? I and like a man with a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want, you can even cut your meringue kisses in I half. Might, I might put some And do a little one there. And then I'm going to do a little bit of crumbled up biscuit. And also if you want a bit of crumbled up cream, or meringue should I say. Oh, she's making it fully like a fried egg. I love it. Does it does look like a fried the egg. The artistic now, license it? of Catherine here. Oh, I feel you ought to break into yellow at this point. What, right now? Right now. Look at the stars. Look, look how they shine for you. And, and all the things you do. So hard to And it was all yellow. Oh, I think we need to get a spoon. I mean, actually, do you want to go fully in? Yes. It might all fall. I think it's going to fall apart. Are we ready? <laughs> oh. No. You definitely need cutlery for this. Mmm. <laughs> Is it better than you thought? I mean, I knew it was going to be really good. Expectations were already really high, but it's nicer than I thought because it's like all the textures mm. and it's not like too sweet. You can come everywhere. I will. Isn't yeah, she good? I will. And then this is like if you just want to make little individual lemon meringue pies. So I've put a little bit of lemon curd in the little bit of the shortbread. Put a little bit of cream on the base of the meringue kiss. Mmm. Boop. Look how pretty that looks. Mm. I'm literally almost finished mine. Are you liking the biscuit on the base? Yeah, it's, it's a, a really it nice texture. It gives it a bit of structure as well. Do you reckon I can get that whole mine? Yeah, I do. <laughs> 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 thank you no, so thank much for inspiring you. Thank this. Thank you very much for having us. You can find the full recipe on the website down below and all the girls baking playlists. And you'll have the, I'm going to do an illustrated recipe for you all. Be sure to create lemon meringue pie pavlovas. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Yeah, and tag, I can tag us subscribe. if you Tag them, tag them. Because I love to see everyone's creations. Hello? Hey, so you know I'm coming over for a bake? Yeah. I was just wondering, is there anything you're really liking at the moment? I mean, I love ginger nuts okay. and I love chocolate. Classic combo, classic <laughs> combo. Okay, I will show you what I'm thinking when I come over. Can't wait. Here she is! <laughs> Good to oh, finally meet so you. Nice to meet Orange oven gloves. Look at the light. Amazing. I know it says love on it. It reminds me a bit of Love Island. It is. A bit flamingo. We'll have the <laughs> bottle in a minute. <laughs> we are seated in a bevy of orange. You don't know yet what we're going to be making. I've not a clue. But you let me know. Favorite biscuit is the mm. great ginger nut. Is that just because the packaging is orange or is that purely coincidental? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe the reason I love orange genuinely is because I associate so much joy with ginger nuts from my childhood. They are a really and good biscuit. And it's so orange. Yeah. I did a little bit of a sort oh of my God. using some <gasps> of your like... <laughs> I came across to you from Next To Me, which was on the In Gold EP. And then obviously I've been loving your recent one, Baby and Loud. So I was sort of like mixing up the different sort of lyrics and music in general. So we're gonna be making sandwich ginger nut biscuits. So making mm. like a sort of chocolate ganache, but it's also gonna have nuts in it. So ginger nuts. Mm. And then, do you like a Frere Rocher? I love a Frere Rocher. So this is gonna be like a ginger nut Frere Rocher. And that's gold. And that's gold, exactly. <laughs> 
We need 100 grams. Do you want to put 100 grams in? Oh, I'd love. I'll let you, you do the honours. Can I ask, do you know what the UK number one was when you were born? This is a question Lovely. I love asking you everyone. You did not prep me for anything. Um, 62, 62. She wasn't born in 1962. She's been using a very good moisturiser. <laughs> Cut that. I'm going to just do a guess, right? Yeah. Sugar okay. babes. No. It's, it's, a, it's a good one. You is it one you that also, knows? Well, it's a version of a very well-known one. Perfect okay. day. Lou Reed, obviously. Lou Reed. But yeah, you were four days. You could have been All Saints Never Ever. Yeah. No way. I know, which made me feel very old. That when makes I found me out. feel old though. Anyway, you are now gonna melt the butter in a pan. Oh, look at that. Good butter. Good butter melting. <laughs> What's the accent? Good butter. I don't know. Good butter. So now we're gonna melt the chocolate in. We've got 100 grams of milk. Okay. And 100 grams of dark. You could just use pure dark or pure milk. There we go. And the heat from the butter will melt the chocolate. Do you remember the first single you bought? Oh my God. I think it was Milkshake. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Damn right. We all love a milkshake. Than, as in like the food or the booty shake. Both. Both. <laughs> At the same time. Yeah. Let's just say, yeah, yeah clarify that. <laughs> That is looking beautiful now. It We've got a, a silky smooth pool of chocolate. So now I'm just going to add in a tablespoon of the ginger syrup. This is just to obviously add extra ginger flavour. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas time, isn't it? We're doing ginger biscuits here, but if you weren't a fan of ginger biscuits, obviously go and give a good hard look at yourself. But you could <laughs> use any other biscuit and not add obviously ginger syrup. You could add golden syrup, maple syrup, honey, but ginger is, it's just a winning combo with chocolate, mm. I think. So that is all melted and now we're going to blitz up the biscuits and some of the peanuts. The recipe needs 100 grams of salted peanuts and 100 grams of honey roasted peanuts, but we're going to be using half of them to decorate the chocolate. We put those in there. We've just blitzed up the biscuits and the peanuts, so you've got like a sort of mm. fine crumb. Do you know what? This would make a really good cheesecake base mm. as well, because I think ginger nuts are the best in like a cheesecake or a banoffee pie base. But if you wanted to, you could add some peanuts in as well. We're just going to mm. mix the biscuits and the peanuts. So it's sort of like a, a chocolate ganache with a bit of sort of like texture and bite. And because of the peanuts, you've also got like a salty kick. So do you want to mix that all in? To be honest, it's so good just like this. You could even have it like over ice cream. It is a versatile chocolate milk. How about the first gig you went to? McFly was the first gig I went to. It's all about you. I think that was my first gig. And then I went to Leonard Cohen. I went all the way to Amsterdam when I was like 14. Did you? Just to see yeah. Leonard Cohen. Yeah, and it, he was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And is there any particular Leonard Cohen track? Oh my God, I mean, Suzanne, Famous Blue Raincoat, all of them. His poetry is just, it's just incredible. It's amazing, like I find that I usually relate more to women, but with him, like his lyrics, I relate so much. It's like he's like talking to me or from me and I'm yeah. like, how do you know, I'm a, I'm a girl, you're a man. I think what you're sort of like listening to when you're growing up and stuff, it's like for me, it was like the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, and they just oh, feel yeah. like part of, you know. You. Yeah. Yeah, totally. No, for me it was like, I mean, Tapestry, Carol King. I literally grew up on that album. So we have now got Yum. a chocolate mix here. You want to let that cool down a little bit, just so it's a bit more of a spreadable consistency. While the chocolate is just chilling slightly in the fridge, we are going to chop up the remaining peanuts to surround the chocolates and the biscuits. So 50 grams of the honey roast ones, so a mix. Do you want to tot it up to 100? Do you remember what the first album you owned was? The first album I owned was Breakfast in America Supertramp. And I had it on vinyl and I was obsessed with it. And I like, I was, I disciplined myself because I rinsed things and I disciplined myself to only listen to it when I was listening to the vinyl, so I didn't like buy it on. Any other time? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, I'm, I'm still obsessed with it. So you can again do this in a blitzer, 
but the good thing about doing it just more roughly with a knife is that you get less of a powdery sort of crunch. Just because some of the powder comes off on the peanuts, we're just going to sieve off that mixture into the bowl. What have you got coming up this year? I'm making a project at the moment which I'm really excited about. I'm kind of going back to my roots a bit, a bit like the In Gold EP. I've been working with this guy called Owen Cutts and he's amazing and we had this idea to basically have me a piano, a guitar and then horns, so like a trombone and trumpet. Yeah. And so we've just been finishing that off recently and it's been really fun like being more involved in the production side of it like I was kind of like arranging all the horn parts and doing all the playing all the instruments and like it's kind of nice going back to basics a bit in that way yeah so I'm quite excited the art of it all yeah is yeah Amazing. I'm going to put those in there so they're the peanuts all broken up there and then in here is just like a fine peanut peanut dust <laughs> It's cooled down a bit and we actually, when we're sandwiching the chocolate biscuits, we want it still quite spreadable, where we just want it to firm up a little bit more for the chocolates. So, just take a ginger nut biscuit and then splodge it on and then take another one and sandwich it together and give it a little bit of a squish so the filling oozes out a little bit. Simple. Oh, That's all we do so and then we're going to give them a bit of a melted chocolate decoration at the end but this is just to get a chocolate filling so what's your writing process like How's that? um so musically and lyrically i do them both at the same time i'll basically sit down with my guitar or something and i'll just put my voice memos on and i'll just start playing and singing for like an hour and then usually by the end of the hour i've kind of got the song often i like Something will happen, like someone will piss me off yeah. or someone will make me happy or I'll see something on the street and then I'll feel really inspired and I won't know why and then I'll sit down and I'll start playing and singing and then by the end of like a few hours I'll be like, oh, this is how I felt about this. Yeah. Or like, oh, I'm actually really pissed off with this girl so and I didn't realise. It's like, a, it's almost is a form of communication. And totally, language. and Literally. like processing really. Instead of like writing in a diary, I'll just sit down at the piano and sing and all this stuff will come out that I didn't even know I was feeling. feeling. Yeah. So, so often things that I could never say or think to say, like I'll sing in my songs and it will, it's a real release for me and then I feel like people listening to it are kind of like, oh, that's, like, I feel They've, that way yeah, too. Yeah, said that exactly yeah. how I felt. So we've sandwiched up the ginger nut biscuits and we're just going to put the mixture in the fridge to firm up for the chocolates, so... I'm going to play you a little, a little song to walk a to the fridge to. Yeah. Which soundtrack? <laughs> What's coming? Uh, what am, okay. <laughs> And then seamlessly going to baby. Seamlessly, uh baby. Love to call you baby. Baby, oh, oh baby. I love to call you baby. Say I don't mind if we sit. The live lounge, I love hearing it like that. Lounge. We've got the chocolate out of the fridge, which to be honest is just good eating like this, but we're going to make mm. them look like ginger nut Ferrero Rochers. Just mould it like that, and then we're going to make a mixture of both ginger nut clustered covered ones, and then we're also going to use the peanut dust. So, do you want to do one mm. in the peanut, peanut dust. dust? 
How did you get started? Growing up there was a piano in our house and so from the age of about six I was just writing songs on the piano. I think for me like songwriting just came so naturally it's almost like I didn't it was never really a choice to do it because yeah. I just kind of have been doing it and then when you think not having it yeah. yeah yeah and then I was supporting a friend of mine so I played before him someone in the audience was a an A&R or manager or something and then the next day he emailed me and said can you send me a demo and I literally did not know what a demo was <laughs> so I got my voice memo and um, recorded a song called Temptation, which was actually the first song yeah. I ended up releasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is on the Gold EP. And the next day, I had about, honestly, about 40 emails from like labels and managers and lawyers. And it was just, I was so overwhelmed. I was like this 18 year old yeah. living on my own, just being like, what has just happened? I've just put some chocolate broken up in a piping bag here. And we're just going to plunge that into a mug that's got boiling water in. And the chocolate just melts in the bag and then you snip off the end and then we can pipe these biscuits and some of the peanut covered chocolates as well. Do slightly Pollock-esque piping and then over the chocolates and then with some of the other just cluster a few on like so and even actually these ones you can put more of a whole nut. Voila! And then if you really want to go to town, you can add a little bit more of the gold dust just over the ginger nuts. It's beautiful. Oh, Fully gold. So beautiful. Fully gold. Is it in gold. Or All edible, yeah. Gold on my lips, gold in my tummy. <laughs> and then my kiss. So there you go. So I'm gonna hand this over wow. to you now. And then while you're doing that, obviously it's to make them look a little bit like that much loved nutty chocolate so i've got in here some just little mini brown cupcake cases oh. and then we're gonna with some gold foil so never never chuck away your chocolate wrapper foil and then take one of these just wrap it up in the foil place it in here so you can see what it's looking like and then I just got some little stickers here and I just wrote gold ginger nuts on and then they can go on top like that. I mean, that's if you really want to get that. I love you. it. So, oh. but equally, you can just eat them as they are. If you could give these to, I don't know, another artist or pass the baking playlist button on, who would you be like? Taylor oh, Swift. Taylor Swift. <laughs> I mean, that would be amazing. She does like baking though. I'm a bit nervous right now. Honestly, just don't think about it. The, the messier the better, so here we go. Have you got any standout Taylor tracks? I like um, Cardigan. Yeah. I really like Exile. The did you see the cardigan kind of... she did as like merchandise that she was wearing in the video? No. Yeah, it's like a sort of cable knit and then it had like a star, I think, on the elbow. Really? Yeah. Full on Swifty style. They're amazing. They're better than mine. Oh my god, this is actually the funnest thing I've done in like a year. <laughs> it's like arts and crafts in the kitchen. Oh my god. With a soundtrack. So what do you want to start with? The ginger nut sandwich cookies, unfoiled chocolates, or the uh, really posh ones on the Let's have stand. the cookie, let's have a cookie. I think the biscuit. I mean, it's, it's, it's a chunky. That is unreal. You have to try. Yeah. See us if they're better than the first lot. Oh, yeah. We're gonna have them. Um... Mm. And they're like not too sweet. That's what I love most about it. 10 out of 10. Ginger and chocolate. I'm gonna go for one of those peanut dust. Mm. That you get even more of a chocolate salt in it. so much better than the Forever Wash it. <laughs> well, I'll say that. We just this have. This is so good. You could just decorate a cheesecake or a cake with these or that is make awesome. your very own jar. Well, you've inspired them. Thank you so much Thank for you being so involved. Much. And good luck with everything coming up this year. Go follow Delilah and also like and subscribe Baking Playlist and you'll find all the visual recipes and hopefully Taylor Swift will be on the next episode. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have ended <laughs>
Hello. Hey, Isaac. Hey, Francis. How are you? I'm good. I was just wondering, is there anything you'd particularly like me to include in the bake I'm going to create for you? Hmm. I love a custard cream. I love chocolate. Anything you can dip in a cup of tea, actually. Okay. Leave that with me and I will come up with something for us to bake together. Hey, can't wait. See you soon. You cut me down, cut me down. You cut me when I'm... Hey, hey, how are you? Good to come see in. You. So nice to see you. How are you doing? Not too bad. Come in, I'm come loving in. the jumper. Thank you. So we're going to be making a cookie. Oh, yes. And a custard Love cream cool. cookie. Because oh. Isaac said his favourite biscuit was a custard cream. It is my favourite biscuit. And it is a pretty easy bake if you've never baked before. So, <laughs> and they're like NYC size cookies, so it's like a oh, cookie nice, cool. rock cake size. Have you baked at all? No, Amazing. never. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm so excited and I'm in good hands. You are obviously. in good hands and everyone's going to see how yeah. simple it is to do. So yeah, once you let me know it was oh, custard wow. creams. So I was just having a little bit of a doodle and obviously your new single, Cut yeah. Me Down, mm -hmm. and we are actually going to be cutting down the custom yeah. creams to go yeah, in yeah, said cookie. Go. And even because I was looking at your, you know, like the swirly patterns on oh, your custard yeah. cream and it was in the music video. So yeah, absolutely. That'll be going in there. So it's like a custard cream cookie. We're going to actually be putting custard powder in there. Chunks of white chocolate. It's going to be a definite tea dunker of a biscuit. So make a cookie. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like making a cake initially. So we're going to cream the butter and the sugar. Yep. So you can be on the measuring out okay. duties. So we've just got a set of digital scales. Yeah. You want 125, but... Um, 125 grams. Let's try that first. And it should be slightly softened because we're going to be creaming it up. This is the most already. technical bit, to be honest. 125, there we go. There we go, brilliant. Perfect. So then if you just put that into the bowl. Okay, dokey. And then we want 75 grams of caster sugar and 75 mm -hmm. grams of granulated sugar. Cool. 75 there grams. Go. Brilliant. There we go. Is, yeah. so, and then exactly the same, put that, put that one in there. And then exactly the same in okay. caster sugar. sugar. Um, and if you had like golden caster sugar or soft brown sugar, you could use that as well. Mm. It, this is just going to make the um, cookies slightly more beige and golden coloured. And then that bake. goes in there. Fantastic. And then all we're going to do is take that over to the mixer and just beat that up until really light and creamy. So while that's beating over there, mm -hmm. we're putting custard powder in, mm -hmm. like we did with the sugar, 75 yep. grams 75. going in the that's bowl. Crazy. You a custard fan? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like banana and custard, actually. Banana and custard's good. Custard with an apple crumble. Yeah. And hot custard and ice cream is actually quite Ooh, a good combo. We've just got a large egg going in there, in there and that's going to bind everything together with the butter and sugar. In. Nicely go. done. We're just going to take that over to the mixer and mix the egg and the custard powder in. Look how custardy it's got. Oh my god, it looks so good. That's like the egg and the custard powder that's made it that sort of bright yellow mm -hmm. colour. So now we're just going to add the dry ingredients to turn it into a dough. Just pour the whole lot there in there. Go. Voila. And then I'm just going to start folding it in and then I'll pass it over to you. In regards to like first memories of music. Mm -hmm. Well, my parents had a jukebox in the dining room, so it was a lot of 70s soul records like Earth, Wind and Fire and Stevie Wonder and real classic soul stuff. The first song I remember hearing was on ev every Sunday my dad used to play the um, play the jukebox and there was a song called Music to Watch Girls Go By, Andy Williams. Yeah, exactly. That's the yeah. first song I remember hearing. That is a good track. It is a great song. It's nice. It makes you feel good. It reminds me of like hot Sunday mornings yeah. with Dad in the garden. Um, Have you tried doing like a cover of that one? No, I haven't. I was I just thinking, because the Bee Gees one, it is amazing how it completely changes. Mm. Whether you're a brother or whether you're a mother, you're staying alive, staying alive. Why that track? I mean, it's a great song. Yes. It's a beautiful song. But I, I was on, the, I was just on the train home one one day, and I was listening to it, and I thought, oh, I'd like to have a go at singing that because when you really listen to it, the lyrics are beautiful. Yeah. And it, it's a really delicate story about living in New York and 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 just surviving. And I and I'd never really listened to the lyrics before because I'm too busy dancing. Yeah. Usually. 
Um, so I just gave it a go and, I'm, and, I, and people seem to really like it. So did you just like find the lyrics on the train and then yourself sort of read them? Yeah, in and I was, context? yeah, exactly. And I, I, try, I was, it was actually a completely empty carriage. So I sort of sang it out loud a little bit just to, just to hear Where it. were you going from? Anyone I think else I was there who potentially was like, I thought I heard that. Yeah, probably. I was, uh, I think I was going from my hometown in Banbury to, to London. Of many, one of those many London yeah. trips until I moved here. And I think I was just excited about the music and I was just feeling, you know, inspired. Now we just want to weigh out 125 grams mm -hmm. of custard creams that are going to go in the cookie dough mixture. Cool. I think it's about 10. Are there any other covers that you're sort of would love to sort of like change the um, pace of? And I've done a cover of um, Dancing in the Moonlight. Yes, top, top loader. loader. But that is actually a cover. Not many people know that. But it? it wasn't the original. No, the original came out in the 70s, which I had no idea until I had to Google it. I like to take my time with covers. I like yeah. to really f hear a song and think, actually, I want to. There's got to be a reason for me to want to do it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like with Bee Gees, I like changing them up quite a lot. Yeah. But if you've got any suggestions, go ahead. Feel free. I'll have a think. Oh, well, we're changing songs. up a custard cream Yeah, biscuit. that's true. Yeah, we're changing so all that. So let's change up a lyric. Right, so awesome. then you can cut up the custard cream Great. Awesome. I'm then I've just got 125 grams of white chocolate here mm -hmm. that I am just going to chop up. We're going to be putting some piece of custard cream biscuit onto oh, the okay. cookie on the top. Nice, so, right. so a few like that. few like that. So we're going to make eight cookies in total, take two biscuits, mm -hmm. cut it into like quarters, and then the rest just literally break up break into up sort of slightly piece. smaller pieces. Is there anyone you would like to sort of do a duet or collaborate with? Ooh, lots of people. I mean, there's a girl called Becca at the moment who I listen to. She's got some great feel-good songs, pop tunes, who I love. Which She's track? awesome. There's a song called I'll Be There. Yeah. I mean, all of them are really great, but there's a song called I'll Be There, which I really, really love. Maisie Peters, I think, yeah. is great. Do you like yeah. Maisie Peters? Yeah. yeah, she's awesome. She loves the Jaffa cake, does Maisie. Does she? Yeah. <laughs> I like Jaffa That's cake, actually. Like, I seem to just find out what people's favourite biscuits are. Yeah, that's... Random the, bit of information. It is a good fact, though. It's a fun but fact. But still interesting. People are like, really? What's your favourite biscuit? Mine, I think, would just be a dark chocolate digestive. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It's a good one. But then it, I like using biscuits, as you can see here, in baking. Yeah. It sort of depends what I'm wanting to use yeah, it for. Yeah, yeah. Just pop all that in Absolutely. the bowl. Absolutely. And we're going to fold that Find through the dough. Mess. Do you remember like the first gig you went to? Yes. I, I think it was, it was so random. I think it was JLS at the Royal Albert Hall. The Royal of all places. Hall. Yeah, I think it was some sort of charity concert or something. But yeah, I think Seal was there, but I loved JLS as a kid. And I did a... Oh, I did a talent show in primary school and me and my mates did a dance to one of their songs. Which one? Which is beat your favourite GLL? Beat, beat again, it was Beat Again. And we copied the video, basically, and there's a green screen graffiti wall behind us. It is... My mum's got it, actually, and she always says, oh, I'm going to leak that one day and get, get the video out because it's quite embarrassing. But yeah, it was a JLS concert. So pretty much self-taught or did you have like lessons? No, I didn't do lessons. I, I mean, YouTube was great at the time and I, I just sort of taught myself and played a lot by ear. But the more songs you play, the more you kind of realise you know, pop songs, chords, yeah, all the, they, they all use the same, similar kind of chords and you find the patterns and so it's just... I also sold my Xbox and got a piano, so... That's well, didn't you like spent. work in a piano yeah, yeah, shop? I, yeah, I do, do, I do, do? yeah, I still do Amazing. a little bit, yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, I started off there as a Saturday boy. I was in a shopping centre and there was a, you know, they do the sort of little stalls with pianos on and shops do little pop-ups in the middle of shopping yeah. centres. There was one there and I sort of went over and started playing the piano and um, walked off and we went into another shop and the, the boss, my boss now, sort of ran after me and he said, do you want a job? <laughs> and I was 14 at the time and I just said, yeah, sure. Yeah. And, um, and I've and yeah, worked there ever since. I mean, it's nice, it's, you know, well, it's to sort be of like a, it, with, within with what music. you love yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah. Shall I put these in? Yeah, amazing. Cool. Well, wasn't it, didn't you have to ask your boss, because when you went on Chris's breakfast show that time? Yes. Was it just before Christmas? So Isaac, yeah, yeah you got rung up. Was it to sort of fill in for Rick Astley? Yeah, it was Rick Astley lost his voice. We're no strangers to love. They needed me to stand in, which was crazy. And I found out on the Thursday about two, three o'clock. And I was on the show the next day about six. I mean, I had to be there at like 6 a.m. It's so early. I had to learn a whole new Christmas song as well because it was all Christmas themed. I remember hearing you. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, I remember cool. hearing you. That's and then so you were on cool. again. And yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. Because did you do, was it Santa Baby? Yeah. The Christmas yeah. one. Santa Baby, just slip a sable under the tree for me. 
We're just mixing oh, wow. in here. Yes. So like the chunks of chocolate and the custard cream biscuit, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna be forming them into cookie mounds itself. But say you said you like jammy dodgers. Mm. So you could do the same thing, but you just chop up the same amount oh, of jammy nice. dodgers. Cool. You could do a bourbon you one. Could do any biscuit. I and guess. you could add cocoa powder in instead of the custard powder. So yeah, it's I think it's just about having the confidence and not mm. being intimidated by it. And, yeah. and playing. Yeah, I yeah, think that's totally. the thing. Yeah, yeah. And if things do go wrong, you learn from it. We're just gonna take this out of the bowl and we're gonna measure it into mounds and then we're gonna start baking the cookies themselves. Oh, that could take someone's amazing. face up. Yeah, you could. <laughs> we're gonna be making eight cookies in mm -hmm. total. And it's roughly about 125 grams. Cool. I mean, you don't have to do it absolutely precise, but it just helps that they then mm. all bake at about the same time. So okay. let's rolling just get that, a, rolling that up. See if that's 125 okay. grams. 125. Perfect. You just sort of mould it into a bit of a bowl. So mm -hmm. the thing is, these cookies, like I said, they're a bit sort of more beefcake -y type cookie. So they can be a bit thicker than... A bit thicker than cool. that. And then we've just got some of the offcuts of the custard cream. That kind of thickness? Beautiful. Great. And then just press that in mm -hmm. to the top like that and then just pop it on there okay. and we're actually going to be freezing these cookies if you haven't got a lot of time you can just put them in the fridge but it just helps them sort of keep their shape when they're in mm -hmm. the oven itself so awesome. let's start the, yeah, let's the cookie production line cool. do you know Isaac mm -hmm. the UK number one when you were born oh I've definitely take seen a guess. this it's something quite cheesy isn't it it was Westlife right Swear it again. Amazing. Do you remember the first single that you bought? Do you know what? I think it was. You know those um, pop party CDs? Do you remember yeah. pop party? It was probably one of those. Although I do vividly remember having a busted CD, but one of the little mini discs. They oh, used the to mini do the discs. little tiny discs. I had one of those. How yeah. long were they around for? Not long. Not long, not long enough. So oh, pop those that. on there. And the good thing about these as well is that because you put them in the freezer, whenever you just want one cookie, just bring it out of the freezer, out. pop it in the oven, and 20 minutes later, you've got a freshly warmed cookie. They smell they amazing. Do. It's just that custody <laughs> just eat them. smell, isn't it? That one looks a bit flat, actually. Is that yeah, okay? if you give them a little them bit, because it depends. Like You can have them a bit flatter. It depends how you like your cookie, but yeah. equally, you can do them more like around. Fine, okay. And they do spread a little bit. Yeah. Just do a mix of them Why and not? see which ones. You like, and then I've just got a bit of spare okay, cool. biscuit Lovely. there, and I'm just going to stick it in the top. So Look at that. That there we go. Great. So let's put them in the fridge cool. or the freezer. Let's do it. These are two of the frozen cookies that we've got out. We've left the others in the freezer for you and your girlfriend to have as and whether. As and whether? As and when, <laughs> as and when you want. I'm going to pop them in the oven. Do you like it when we bake like this? I like it when we bake like this. And she said, me too. Hey. <laughs> and she said, me, me too. too. One more time. Do you like it when we bake like this? this? Everybody join in. I like it when we bake like this. this. The cookies have come out mm -hmm. and they've, they've cooled down. It's best to like leave them to cool on the tray, but they are, look at them. Oh, and you get so the little good. golden nuggets of white chocolate on the base. They are good to go as they are. But while I was here, I was like, why don't we make them even more super duper cookies? Yeah. <laughs> so I've got some of the white chocolate we didn't use. Melted. And this is like a little nice. DIY bain marie. So we've just got a cup of hot water in there, mm. put a saucer with chopped up white chocolate, mix that in there. And then we're just going to take mm -hmm. another custard cream and it's just going to add an extra sort of like bite and texture. Just take the base of cool. our cookie and then put some... What side up do we eat the cookie? Which side up would you eat a chocolate covered digestive? Well, because you, you think it would be this way up, but I would usually eat the cookie with Whatever, whatever side the layer of chocolate is on. So you like probably, that side. If we yeah. did it like that, yeah, you would definitely I probably want to. And I don't know way. if we could. Do you reckon we'd still dunk? We'll, with give, this? It we'll give it a good go. We'll give yeah. it a good go. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming. A big brew. I think we're wise to cut it. I think we are. So it's a bit and more the chocolate here. hasn't fully like set yet. It looks so good. Look, Look at, at that. that. Oh. Chunkity chunky, and then I'll cut this okay, one. Okay, cool. I'm going to dunk the second bit. Mm. Mm. That is so good. It is a custard cream cookie. I love the layer. Do you like the layer? Yeah, I really love it. So if you're making them and you want to make them Isaac certified, mm. you've got to do the extra bit of melted chocolate. That is so good. So have you got some <laughs> festivals coming up then this summer? 
doing a few festivals for the first time, which is so exciting. And I'm probably doing another little tour at the end of the year, yeah. I think, as well. I love playing live. I just want to well, get out. That's the thing. Everyone's missed out. Yeah, totally. Have you got a karaoke track? Do you know, I haven't done karaoke since I was about probably 10. When I was on holiday in Lanzarote. I did Viva La Vida, Coldplay, which is a great That song. is a good track to have on the mm. uh, playlist. Yeah, add it to the playlist, yeah, it's a great tune. But I reckon if I did it now, I'd want to be the front man of a band, you know, something a little bit like, I'd maybe do something from Queen, a Queen song, or there's a song called Love Me that the 1975 do, which I love, which is very, yeah. you can sort of show off while you're doing it, I think it's quite good. And would you ever want to do the Bee Gees, Staying Alive, actually, the actual version? The actual version? Very high. Feel, yeah, it's quite high that? as well. <laughs> it's quite high. Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't. It's too good. It's yeah. Too, I, I, yeah. It's too good to too good to do that version. I don't know if I'd do it justice. No, I love the love the what you've done with it anyway. Thank you. Have you tried the one? Mm. These are still a I bit. I love it. Still a bit warm. I've got that little bit in the middle. Yeah, there. it's still gooey on the, the, the you know the so chocolate's melting. So we've left a whole load in the freezer for you mm -hmm. anyway to give a go. Thank you so much, Isaac, Thank for you. being part of Baking Playlist and for inspiring these cookies. So good. Is there Thank anyone you. you would like to see on the baking playlist? The last gig I went to was last week. I saw Tom O'Dell, so get him on the show. A lot of people don't know this, but Tom O'Dell's favorite biscuit is a custard cream. Is it? Yeah, in fact. There we go. I was speaking to him about an apple crumble custard cream. So potentially, if Tom likes that. Collab. Collab. Collab, collab. For anyone wanting to make this particular Isaac Stewart custard cream cookie, the full recipe can be found on the website. And if you go to Spotify, you can listen along to Isaac's baking playlist with everything from Busted to Coldplay, Coldplay Bee Gees. Yeah, Becca. Becca. So there we go. Thank you so much. Cheers. I'm going to clear the kitchen up now because it's an absolute mess behind us all. Like and subscribe and go and check out Isaac. I'm here with Ray Morris and we're going to be making some Rose Garden seedling tiffins based after a raised track, Rose Garden. Very excited about it. When I was like finding out from you what your favourite ingredients were and sweets and chocolates. I sent you a lot of information about that. Loads of good stuff though, <laughs> loads of good stuff. So one of the main sort of basic ingredients in a tiffin is the biscuits. Right. So you were saying you love ginger nuts, which I love, I and nice biscuits. So we're almost going to play on like an A side and a B side. So I'm going to put in some of your favourite things and you're going to put in the other side. But what we're going to be doing is exactly the same and all the weights and all of that is exactly the same. Brilliant. I'm using coconut oil, vegan friendly, and then you've just got some good butter. Good old fashioned. So you want 50 grams going in there. Okay. There we go. 43. On the money, a little bit Not more. Not bad. Oh. And you want a tablespoon of golden syrup. Okay. There you go. Great. I love golden syrup, it reminds me, because my mum used to have the amazing the tins. tins. I love the tins. They're oh. also really good to bake in. Oh, really? You, you can actually some, bake in the tin itself? You can bake in the tin. Wow, Cake that's tin. so cool. We've got Chucky. 100 grams of milk chocolate, 100 grams of dark chocolate, and this is actually your friend Phil's chocolate, isn't it? It is. It? It's my mate Phil's chocky. Incredible, um, like... Thanks for giving it to us, Phil. Oh, nice. So it's, <laughs> it's even got more of a sort of like a personal touch. Yeah, I think that's so nice. Like, like, you know, when you're in a kind of creative industry, there's so many friends and people that do cool things. And I guess that's kind of how we met, really, yeah. via like Bombay Bicycle Club. Yeah, I know, it was, it was Joe Wiley, wasn't it? And Joe Wiley. And I remember she was playing one of your tracks. And then you, you like tweeted back, didn't you? And you're in the studio with them. Yeah, yeah with Mr. Fryers. <laughs> Mr. And Fryers. we were saying, like, Francis, can you, can you make us a cake and bring it to the studio? We were being really cheeky, I think. I was loving it, though. <laughs> I was like, what sort of bake do you want? And I remember just Ben was saying nothing with marshmallows in. Yeah, he doesn't like marshmallows. This is almost like British Rocky Road, which doesn't have marshmallows. So Perfect, ben ideal. friendly. Is this going straight in Go here, straight then? Go straight in there. I like this approach, it's a bit more it's like just... a bit just... more hands-on. Yeah. Give that a little bit of a stir. Oh. It's not actually on direct heat, but because the oil or the butter is so warm, the chocolate is literally melting like a bath. It does the job for you, that's amazing. In here, I've got the nice biscuits. So it's 50 grams, so it's about five biscuits each. Right. And you've got ginger nuts. And then these are salted almonds. Right. Which are amazing anyway, but they actually look a bit like a rose hip seed. They do. You could blitz them up in a processor. Right. But we're going old school. Just gonna put it in a Ziploc bag. Great. And then just fold that up. And then with a rolling pin, 
Oh, you go first. Just take your anger out. Oh, look at this. So, yeah, when did you start making music? Yeah. You were saying it was when you had your tonsils out. <laughs> That's that another running worse. joke that I couldn't really sing until I had them out. So, um, but yeah, I don't want to encourage people to go and get their tonsils <laughs> out or anything, but. They're all ready to go in. How is hey. your... I just need forgot a bit about more. that. It's, it melts pretty quick, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that smells so nice now. Give that a little bit more of a melt. And then we're going to also flavour the chocolate. So I've got a lime here because it's like lime and coconut. Cool. And you've got a lemon as much for flavour, but also like your album cover, which Cut. is such a great, amazing yellow colour. It is. It's almost neon, isn't it? But it's pretty, pretty close. I'm going to grate in... It literally looks like grass. Grass is going in. <laughs> <laughs> there is grass going in. Grass is going in the tip. That smells so amazing as well. I'll pass over cool. the grater. They just do it really fine. I mean, you can use a thicker one, but you'd have a bit more like thick cut marmalade. Instead of the marshmallows, for adding a bit of chew into the tiffin, I've just got 50 grams of mango here. Oh, wow. You can do it with a knife, but okay. using scissors. Oh, oh. <laughs> there it goes. Feeding around is uh, you just sort of almost take your dried fruit to the hairdressers. How small do these little bits need to be there? Well, you don't have to be too precise, but you don't want like too big a chunk. So how did you figure out that putting mango in something like this would be a great idea? Is it just trial and error? But it is, I guess, a bit like trial and error. You've just got to give it a go. And sometimes, even when mistakes happen, they can end up turning into a creation that you maybe wouldn't have come across if you hadn't actually... Like, and whole... that happens in music as well. So much of the time, you know, you write so many songs and the majority of them are terrible and then... <laughs> but were there any like, any of the tracks or any parts of the tracks that were like, came about sort of serendipitous? Actually, the album track in particular, someone out there um, came about because a fan sent all these beautiful gifts to the studio and it was so thoughtful and amazing. Ginger nuts? Um, not quite oh. ginger nuts. <laughs> it wasn't that thoughtful. Um, but actually, like, really creative and I just thought, that's just such a beautiful thing to do to let someone know that you're there and that you you kind of care about what they do. So now we're going to just tip in. To the tip in. To the tip in. Just pour that in. And then another little thing that adds an extra bit of flavour is I've just got some vanilla extract here. So you want a teaspoon, but again, it's about a capful. Oh, I like that. So stir that in. Cool. We've got here. Oh, that looks so good. Just like a little scattering of rose petals. Now, I do feel like I'm Rowan Atkinson in Love Actually. <laughs> And then pumpkin Good seeds, then. so they're similar colour and they look a little bit like a rose leaf petal. And it's, and it's a literal seed, I literal guess. Literal seed. Because the lyric in the song is, I could plant a rose garden. So stir that around. I want to eat it. My favourite thing to do was when your mum's been making the cake, just literally straight from well, the bowl. And also, I know it's like raw <laughs> flapjack mixture. I prefer actually to cook. Completely. So good. We're going to be then putting it in these little so cool. trays here. Great. Are these fresh from the garden centre as well? Fresh from the garden centre. I love but that. But they've got a little hole in the bottom. So to stop all the mixture seeping out, we've got Rose's chocolates. And you were saying you love the golden barrel. I do. So just take one of the chocolates and just put it in the base. Oh, so you one? stop the chocolate mixture okay. seeping out. Pop them in. And then just take the pan. So you want to just fill the little trays about half full. Okay. And then we're going to be adding another rose. How am I doing there? Amazing. I've maybe put oh, too much in. You can squash or? them down, it's fine. Okay. And then just take another chocolate of your choice. I'm going to take another barrel. So, another so that goes barrel. on top again? That just squishes down in the middle. So when the idea is that when you then cut through it, you get like a little hidden rose. Wow, Pop that's so cool. In. The remaining mixture, just cover that last chocolate okay. and put it on. So is there anything you really crave when you come off maybe doing like a live performance? I actually find that I'm pretty depleted of salt after a, you know, I've been jumping oh, well, around. Actually, you can stop right there. Because what is there? <laughs> well, I, was, I wasn't leading it towards that, but I, I have been were. eyeing that up. Like, what is right, that? Right, come on, come on, introduce everyone to so this. So this is truffle salt which <laughs> I think Francis knows about because we've spoken about my, my favourite thing are truffle crisps. But you haven't, you should say that. <laughs> and you got some. Because the golden barrel is caramel, you could do like salted caramel. Sprinkle a bit of that over the chocolates now. You can go right this in there, can This could be a I? taste sensation. 
Okay, so I think I've covered those now. Covered those. In here is some like cacao nibs. Nice. You could just use grated chocolate, but and also a few chopped nuts. Cool. So it's just looking a bit like that sort of earthy. That's lovely. Topsoil approach. I and the good that. thing about basing something on like a garden, you don't have to worry about it looking too perfect. That's my kind of bacon, to be honest. And also, because you're putting them in these little tiffin seedling trays, just a little finishing touch. These are little <laughs> biscuit planters. Wow, look at those. So this is just some biscuit dough. That's so cute. And then this that looks like some crazy Edward Scissorhand knuckle duster, but it's actually a herb wow. cutter. So it sort of fits in with the gardening theme. So did you cut? You just run it over the biscuit dough, right. so they're all about the same size. And then you can just leave them plain, but you can get these like little letters. That's amazing. Box, but they should just Lovely. stick through. It's really satisfying. Because you feel like you've done it as well and you're finished and you're labelling it. And you've got it. like little gingerbread ones there. Is that what they are? They're gingerbread oh, dough. Wow. And then I've just got Brilliant. some plain vanilla ones. And then final little touch, there's just some rosemary. Rosemary as well as smelling amazing and it also going really well with chocolate it's obviously like for memory oh that's so nice so i was thinking like oh. for dancing with characters dancing with should character i say in particular yeah the video for that was filmed in blackpool yeah we did it in the tower ballroom oh. and the whole video is about memory and dance and how that's all connected so this this is really beautiful did they actually have the disco balls in there they did they've got like one particular massive one and then they've got the the whirlits organ which is like legendary did they have a disco ball helmet they didn't have a disco ball helmet is this going somewhere <laughs> oh my god my friend ollie made them i've got to put this on you've got to put it on because health and safety in the kitchen it's like daft punk style <laughs> how's it look it's true yeah but you should just spin round. and so then obviously with a disco helmet on you then take these yeah to the fridge okay to chill it's quite heavy this disco head <laughs> You can have it like that, straight off a spoon. It's really good, I know you love sticky toffee pudding. I do. So it'd be really lovely over that or over ice cream, but we want it a little bit thicker for our little terrariums. But right. yeah, that goes in the fridge. So this is the tiffin mixture, but you can also just pour it into a normal light tray and let it set and then just chop it up. So you just sort of like build it up. Okay. So you've got like all the nuts and then you've got some cacao nibs and then whether you're using brownies or Oreos and then that's just like the layer of ganache. Look at that. Ooh. Oh my word. How's Be that? Be generous. That's all good. Yeah. There you go. There we go. That's the brownie, right? That's the brownie mix. And it's fine to just... Just go straight on. Which artist influenced you growing up? I grew up listening to a lot of, a lot of radio um, so I heard so many great pop songs over the years of, of kind of hearing my dad singing Steely Dan in the kitchen and um, and then when I kind of discovered interesting female vocals like Feist and Cat Power and yeah. Joni Mitchell um, Judy Zook was another one who's kind of slightly more unknown I guess but um, she was really big inspiration and then Kate Bush is well. there anyone you'd like love to collaborate with there's, there's loads of people I think I'm really interested in the Swedish pop yeah. world at the moment like Robin missing we you. both love Robin yeah I think I'm fascinated by alternative pop music how that can really just kind of be so creative and artistic as well as basically like ABBA <laughs> <laughs> which favorite track Oh, Dancing Queen. Oh, totally. Always. And this is some Greek basil Ooh. and there's mint. Or we could go back to our old favourite, rosemary. Oh, in yeah. Fact, oh, you, you left your golden barrel. Oh, no, I was meant to put that, that in there. That means you've got to eat it Can now. I just shove it down? <laughs> plunge it in. Could I plunge it? See, this is the, the planting. Oh, perfect. There you there go. There it is. Oh, and, and then you can... Look at that. That, that, that now was quite, looks more authentic. It's quite a ceremony, that. I like I felt, your technique I felt quite, that. Quite, um, You've got to go the Morris technique. Don't follow just, the Quinn way. Just <laughs> stunk it in at the end. There they go. Oh, and she's gone rose petals. So then you okay. can stick one of those in. Amazing. And so you just pop them in the fridge. The surprise. And hopefully our other tiffins should now have set. Well, these have been chilling. Look at that. So just how do you do it? it. Oh, Pop it out. that's really you satisfying. See, it is, and you get all the little ridges down the side. Amazing. Little thing there. Can and you then just kind of. You can eat it straight, straight like that. You could cut it down the middle, 
so you can see what's in it. But these here as well, they're just some like mango slices that have just dried up in the oven. So you can even take wow. a bit of the rosemary stalk, which almost acts as a bit like a cocktail stick. Oh yeah. And you can just sort of like wind it wow. round and it looks like a little bit like a rosebud. You're it's so creative. creative. <laughs> Let's stick that one in there. You can make a little make one. Make it happen. You can make a little bouquet. Look at that, that's beautiful. That's popped in there. And to carry on with the gardening theme, there's actually just what some cream in, in there. there. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a bit oh, of a dribble. Oh, wow. That's that works, table. isn't it? Pause it down. That's pretty look. impressive to wheel out at the end of a, a the dinner end, or something. Or I at think the end of a performance. At, at the end of a gig. <laughs> yeah. Can I try this? Oh, my word. I don't want to give you a sugar crash because you're obviously going to be performing Rose Garden. I think I need a bit of sugar. Yeah, yeah maybe. It's got ginger and lemon in, hasn't it? I suppose a bit. So that is helping with the throat for singing purposes. Mm. And you're going to be moving around. So this That's is giving amazing. you the energy.